Is it working? Ah, are we live? Oh, shit. We're live. Apologies in advance, everybody. I'm Tony. And I'm Alex. And I'm Tony. It's been about a fucking month since we've had the official Metal Joystick podcast. Yes, it has been, because we, we've been busy. I've been busy myself. He's been busy. I've been sad, and Tyler's been stressed. But y'all yeah. doing a wonderful job on the Super Metal Joystick podcast. Well, thank you. Thank you, sir. Yes. But uh, we got a whole lot packed into this show today. But first, we'd like to give a special dedication. This episode is dedicated to one of our old co-workers, Miss Laura Wells. Yeah. Who uh, passed away last Tuesday from cancer. And... Uh, those that don't know, Tony, Tyler, and I all work together at uh, Shirt Factory, and Tyler and I still work there. But uh, Laura was a sweet old lady that Tony and I worked with quite often. Oh yeah. And uh, we have whenever we'd bring our speakers in, <laughs> we'd uh, we'd play some of the heaviest shit from like Suffocation down to like the nerdiness of Freedom Call, and <laughs> she loved every bit of it. Man. Oh yeah. <laughs> and then when she put on her own music, it was like fucking old school country. Fucking classic rock. Or modern rock. Exactly. Depending on the day. <laughs> are we going to hear Conway Tweedy today, or are we going to hear Nickelback and Disturbed back to back to ass crack? And then, with fucking, she loved Dragon Force, oh, too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, she's just a sweet old lady and she... really hard worker at Lake Shirts. Oh, God, and... yeah. She came back even after she started chemo. Exactly. She will be missed. Yeah, she will. So rest in peace, Laura. This one's for you. But we got a lot today, ladies and gentlemen. We got a full ass load. Oh yeah, a full oh, ass load. Wonderful. I guess ass. We'll, we'll start off with fucking Ingve's got an NFT now. Oh god. <laughs> Mr. Mousestein call me what? tits. Why? What is it? What is it called? It's just called the Ingve NFT for his new album. Fuck. No. Yes. No. No. Also, while we get into this, I should say that a lot of these are from, like, yeah, a month ago. <laughs> so, <laughs> there might be, there we might be a little dated back, but that's okay. I mean, we got about a month of news we all missed, because me and Tyler don't pay attention to the news for and, the Super Metal Joystick Podcast. And quite honestly, there's been a lot of negativity going on in the yeah. metal scene as yeah. of late, and it's made me sad, and there's been a lot of death that's been happening lately. So much death. We got Dusty Hill and Joey Jordison. Got and, the drummer for the Rolling Stones. Yeah, he just passed like, away, too. Holy crap. The dude that literally rocked and rocked till he dropped. Yeah. Seriously. <laughs> Fucking fucker was 80 years old, and he was still drumming for the Rolling Stones, ready to do a stadium tour. But I just heard that uh, they're going to keep it going. Oh, yeah. They're, well. They ain't going to stop their tour. I mean, I'm sure they figured he was going to drop dead pretty soon. <laughs> I mean, I mean, that's, that's I guess. They probably have a contingency in, the con in their contract that... You can't cancel shows because one of you died. You're all walking corpses anyways. <laughs> right. Dude, Rolling Stones have been old for like 40 years, dude. Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> how, how long has that... Have they even been a band? Like 65? Somewhere Something like, like that. It's, it's been a fucking... They were year. competing with the Beatles, so... Oh, damn. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. It was either the Rolling like, Stones or the Beatles. Well, where do you guys stand in that? Uh, I, I forget that the Rolling Stones are actually a band. <laughs> so, Honestly, like, the I'll take the Beatles. The magazine has a band about them. <laughs> I, I've always, I mean, well, you guys know this. I've never been a big Beatles fan. Yeah. Uh, as much as that is blasphemy as a person who listens to rock music in general. I just have never liked the Beatles much, but I've never liked the Stones much either. Pretty much rock. I started to like rock music once Zeppelin and ACDC kind of hit the scene. Honestly, though. It's funny that you don't like the Beatles, yet you enjoy disco. Well. And you grew up with hippies. I mean, well, actually. That, <laughs> He's got a point. <laughs> that kind of leads into, my parents, neither one of them likes the Beatles. My dad can't stand the Beatles. Yeah. So he's on the uh, Rolling Stones side then? No, he can't stand the Stones either. He, Well, you see, between the Rolling Stones and the Beatles, my dad listens to the Doors. 
<laughs> I mean, hey. And, uh, to be honest, out of the three of them, I would pick the Doors, too. I, I'd pick the Doors, yeah, honestly. Yeah, honestly, yeah. Far better band. <laughs> I mean, fuck, I can, I can go my whole life without hearing Can't Get No Satisfaction again. I can, I mean, they're actually, I will say out of the two, I would pick the Rolling Stones just because Gimme Shelter is a masterpiece. Yeah, it's a good tune. I like the Yellow Submarine. Well, I mean, yeah. I, I'm a bigger fan of the Beatles myself. I do like Eleanor Rigby. That's a good song. Eleanor Rigby is pretty good. Or paperback writer. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'll be honest. I know far more Beatles songs than I do fucking Stones. Well, yeah. you see, the Beatles made more worthwhile albums. The yeah. Stones just made a lot of singles and just kind of petered out. I mean, they're still going, but like... Have they released an album in the last 30 years? Yeah, they have. Their, I think their last release was like 2016. Really? Yeah. Why? I just... Shit if I know. Because, but... like, I would die to hear new Journey music. I'm not looking to hear a new song by the Rolling Stones ever oh. again. Oh, of course not. It's kind no of sad doubt. that the Rolling Stones are fucking still going, and yet Aerosmith is pretty much confirmed to be completely defunct now. Why is that? We just no that... They're literally the only place they play now is Vegas. I suppose, yeah. Vegas! I mean, they have a contract to pretty much play in Vegas, but... Speaking of, like, Vegas and you were bringing up Journey, they actually have a residency there now, too, oh, through wow. the month of December. Well, huh. shit. So on Christmas, people are going to be able to listen to Journey in Ooh. Vegas. I mean, if I were in Vegas in December, I would listen to Journey. Merry Christmas, okay, right. we're playing Eclipse front to back, that's all you get. <laughs> oh shit Here's your Christmas present fuckers Enjoy some goddamn talented prog rock for once We're not playing Don't Stop Believing Don't ask <laughs> Shit We need the boomer tunes goddammit <laughs> Oh it feels good to be back Speaking of boomer tunes One of the biggest boomer tunes Just hit a billion streams on Spotify Oh, oh, oh. It's uh, by a band called Guns N' Roses. Oh. Can you guess what song it is? Welcome to the Jungle? No. No. Paradise City? No. Uh. Uh. Sister Fister. <laughs> <laughs> Close. Uh. Rocket Queen? No, Sweet Child of Mine. Oh, God damn it. God damn it. Oh. <laughs> the only one oh. he did Fucking A. <laughs> oh, the song I try to pretend doesn't exist. I know, same here. Yeah. I love Guns N' Roses, but God, that song, no. Like, I'm not a fan of it either. But I just hate Guns N' Roses. Well, <laughs> I, I have to learn it on bass, because we just learned... Uh, we actually just had our first show. It went really well. I know, Good to hear, man. And uh, we uh, we added ten more songs, and Sweet Child of Mine is on there. Weedle, 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 weedle! Fuck. Fucking hate that riff. Yeah, me too. And fuck Duff McKagan, man. <laughs> he's a bastard. Because he's actually a really good bassist? Yeah, he's a really fucking good bass player. He's probably like the best member of Guns N' Roses. <laughs> oh, I mean, you're not wrong either, though. I mean, you got... Who do you got? You got Izzy Stradlin slash... Which I think is a little a little overrated. Yeah, a lot overrated. I mean, he's he, a blues guitarist. He, he wears a top hat. I mean, you can't beat Buckethead. Fuck no. No, God Slash no. Slash versus Buckethead? Buckethead wins every day of the week. Especially with his six new albums he's released this year. This He's released six? He's released six Pike albums. Slow ball on it for him. You like that? That's just chump levels for him. <laughs> well, I'm sure he's busy. He had There were actually four studio records and two live albums that Ooh. he released. Huh. And one of his solo records uh, that he released recently he has an epic that has 24 minutes long Damn. it's pretty fucking good we got, a lot, we got a lot of epics this year i'm so excited yes because dream theater is coming out with a new record too they're finally playing an epic again it's a, a view from the top of the world mm -hmm. so excited i don't think uh, our friend or well, work friend or whatever you want to call him mr Grieger. oh i Grieger. don't think he's gonna ever be able to w finish his uh his dream of listening to every single Buckethead song. Why not? Because there'll never did. be an end. Well, <laughs> yeah. He makes them quicker than you can listen to them. 
That's not true. I get through... If I were to spend my whole day listening to Buckethead, I could at least get through, like, yeah. 20 albums. <laughs> I mean, yeah, he doesn't have long albums. Well, like... And the ones that are long, they're, like, maybe an hour tops. Yeah. And some of them are just, like, five minutes long. <laughs> but a lot of them are just hard to find. Yeah. And whenever you look for physical copies on eBay, they're always overpriced as a motherfucker. Seriously. God forbid you try and find a copy of Bucket Headland. God, if I could find a... If I, if anybody has a copy of Bucket Headland that they want to send me, reach out on Twitter or something. My Ooh. It's at KingUgly96. We'll review it for the podcast. Yes, we will. Even though I've already listened to it. <laughs> but it, it we'll still review it on the podcast. You're the epic, though. I'm so fucking pumped because we got a new epic by Dream Theater. And it's over the 20 minute mark for once. How long is it? Actually, no look at that. It's twenty minutes and sixty nine <laughs> seconds. I, I haven't listened to uh, the Alien yet. It's it because I heard it's kind of ishy. Oh, dude, I fucking love it. But I'm a diehard Dream Theater fan. I love every album by them. I don't know. I I was just you know Mike the music snob on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. I kind of take took a break from watching his videos, and one of them got recommended to me. He's like, "Why I'm bored of Dream Theater," and and I didn't watch it because well. I, I just don't think he's a very eh, 20 like minutes and 24 seconds actually this is probably the most like this is um Black Clouds and Silver Linings like length songs and uh, structure oh, the nice. shortest song is 6 minutes and 25 seconds we're getting the long dream theater songs again man I couldn't be more excited well shit <laughs> that'll be nice it's clocking in at an hour 10 minutes and 19 seconds and it's got such cool song names. You got The Alien, Answering the Call, Invisible Monster, Sleeping Giant, Transcending Time, Awaken the Master, and A View from the Top of the World. Nice. It'll be the second epic I'm excited for this year because the first epic was so Sorelle Minore, Sorella Minore by Terra Maze, the fucking 25 minute long masterpiece of progressive metal. Uh, some would call it a masterpiece. I would. I listen to it too. I, I it's just the vocals, man. I'm not a fan of their vocalist. I love it. The instrumentals are dope, though. I love it. It's pretty cool. I I, I surely don't hate it. And we're getting another album by them this year. Another one? Yeah. Oh shit. Three albums in two years, man. Well, ain't that it's some good shit. to see? But uh, fuck. I want to wait till he gets back to get into the fucking uh, crazy news of the big three. Oh. But before we get into that, uh, Slipknot has officially confirmed that they're leaving Roadrunner Records. Oh, what if they'll start making good music again? Right. <laughs> they, uh, yeah, Clown confirmed that they had their seven album contract and they are done after that. Shit. So I mean, they got I, one more record to make. A change in record label can really like fix your perspective and fix your style change. I mean... Camelot switched over to Napalm with Haven, and I mean, they've sounded good since. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've completely won. I've one hundred percent turned around on the Shadow Theory. I think it's actually pretty fucking great. I can tell you though, there's gonna be like a fucking bidding war to get Slipknot on their label. Oh yeah, I bet. I bet Nuclear Blast wins all of it though. Nu I don't think Nuclear Blast would sign Slipknot. <laughs> you I know what? They'll probably sign to a fucking major label. They'll probably get go on to fucking. Warner Brothers or Probably some hop shit. on board with Judas Priest at Sony Music. Maybe. Oh yeah, Judas Priest is on Sony Music, mm -hmm. huh? But uh they make good consoles and they fucking produce Judas goddamn priest. <laughs> fucking A right. They'll jump on the Microsoft. <laughs> oh wait, <laughs> they don't have one. Slipknot represented by Xbox Series X. <laughs> but uh alright. Now that he's back. Let's get into, like, the huge news of, like, the big three that's left of Thrash Metal now. Oh. Because Metallica, Anthrax, and Megadeth all have a lot of news to cover. Urr. And we'll start off with the best one, Metallica. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you are right. <laughs> so, first of all, they're hopping on the podcast bandwagon now. Hmm. Oh. It's pretty cool. I listened to the first episode, and they go really in-depth and have a lot of guests on there. Okay, cool. And it's pretty cool. So just all of them pretty much hanging out and talking? Pretty much. That's awesome. 
I, mean, I would love to just hear Metallica chill and talk. That actually does sound pretty legit. It is pretty cool, and they just released their second episode today, Ooh. and I haven't gotten a chance to listen to it yet. But uh, we have a couple of their mem- uh, one member, uh, Kirk Hammett. He is leaving ESP to go join Gibson. Oh shit, another on the Gibson train? Which means now Gibson has Dave Mustaine and Kirk Hammett there. Oh damn. And uh, so that's pretty cool. Nothing Else Matters music video surpassed 1 billion views on YouTube. Nice. Nice. And uh, our favorite Danish midget released a signature snare drum for Tama for the Black Album. Oh. Oh, and speaking of which, have you guys heard of the Black Album? No. What is it? It's an album by Metallica, right? That still sells like 5,000 copies a week. Which oh, they, Metallica they... won't stop talking about because that's everything I see on Metallica lately. <laughs> hey, did you guys see all the old live footage? Yes, five years ago. <laughs> <laughs> they, I, I thought they just went from Manchester Stall to, to Lone. No. Oh. What yeah, kind that's... of fucking transition is that, Tony? It, it, must have, it must never have gotten very big. Man. Um, I've never heard of it before until yeah, now. Not... It's the first I'm hearing of it. I've never oh, once ta- listened talking, to it. You're talking about, oh yeah, Metallica, they're covering a bunch of songs by like all those celebrities, right? Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> no, but le- le- legitimately, I fucking love the Black Album. It's... I mean, it was one of, like, almost everyone's first Metallica album. Oh, yeah. I mean, if you're a metal fan, even if you don't like Metallica, how have you never heard of the Black Album? Right? You've it, heard Enter Sandman. It plays at Walmart for fuck's sake. It does. <laughs> but... <laughs> they play the whole Black Album at Walmart. <laughs> Why? Because they always have copies. <laughs> but the uh, they keep releasing shit for the Blacklist, and then they keep releasing live footage from back in the day. I mean, hey, more old live footage is pretty badass. Oh, yeah, especially back when Metallica were kind of in their prime still. But uh, Bruce Dickinson had a few words to say about the Black Album, too. Oh? He said that... Uh, we didn't have the balls to do that, and Metallica did. I mean, to bring metal into mainstream success. To be honest, Damn. Iron Maiden. Well, especially around the time when the Black Album was released, ninety-one. Iron Maiden were kind of floundering. Yeah, well, what the hell were they doing in nine? That was Fear of the Dark, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we don't talk about that. <laughs> we don't talk about the album before it either. I mean, let, let, we'll get, get no out. prayer. <laughs> Iron Maiden ended in eighty-eight and then came back in. Well, actually, I can't even. The X Factor was a random album they released, and then Brave New World happened. That's they didn't do anything between those. No, <laughs> just like Judas Priest didn't make an album between Painkiller and Angel Retribution. We all know this, right, guys? Yeah, not. They took a while. I mean, yeah, it took, it took a lot, long time. I mean, bold moves for that like guitarist who's imitating them. He's taking their name and like bringing that weird dude. What is it, Tim the Ripper Owens, that Ice Earth singer? Yeah, yeah, dude. He kind of the one that used to play for Ingve, right? Yeah, yeah. And then that random guitarist they got with them. I mean, yeah. the dude, he keeps acting like he was in Judas Priest, but I never heard of him before. Yeah, the f- fuck, shit. I mean, where is you this mean, guy from? You mean King Cunt Downey? I mean, the dude who won't shut the fuck up. Dude who's got a doo doo butt. I do just have to point out one more thing. I'm convinced he's officially doing this. He, he's just trolling at this point. Oh, yeah. Because his most recent comment, have you heard it? No. I took the name KK's Priest because I couldn't let 40 years of heavy metal history go to waste. Oh, fuck I, off. Come on. Jesus Priest is still think, going. I honestly think that he has gone senile. Oh, yeah. Like, full ass, old man gone fucking senile. It's really sad, too, for the sake of, like, his new album because... The first two songs kicked ass. Brothers of the Road's okay. Face Your Fist sucks. Like, yeah. There is, the hook is terrible and it is deep. Like, Primal Fear figured out this formula years ago. Oh, For yeah. doing, like, Raise Your Fist kind of this. I mean, they have In Metal We Trust, Living for Metal. Metal is forever! <laughs> say it, don't spray it, bro. Sorry. <laughs> you, you can't not say you, metal is forever. You can't. You can't not do the forever. Yeah, but you don't need to make a sp- sal- Sammy sprinkler. <laughs> Just oh man, you're yeah. shorting up my PC with how many buckets you be throwing out. Fuck. <laughs> yeah. Any more news for the big three though? Yes, okay. because. Uh, yeah, I think that's all the all the Metallica shit that I... Oh, yeah, they're donating a lot of money to Haiti, too. Oh, cool. 
cool for the earthquake, I think. They had another earthquake? Shit, Haiti needs to just move out. <laughs> I also did see their whiskey at Bottle Barn in Fargo recently. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah, they do have it there, huh? I was debating on Gitta, but I didn't want to spend 50 bucks on a bottle that I probably wasn't going to like. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, let's go down. We got... Megadeth's got some news. Oh. So James Lomenzo is back as their live member. Really? Huh. Yeah. Okay, alright, that's good news. Those that don't know, James Lomenzo used to play bass for Megadeth back in Endgame era. Yeah. <laughs> Watch Chris Broderick's just going to show up again in the band one day. <laughs> up Ward of Act of Defiance. <laughs> oh yeah, I looked up what happened to Act of Defiance too. Oh, yeah, yeah, they're on hold. Oh. They're on a hiatus. What happened? Uh, they're just too busy. Oh, yeah. Chris Broderick's got In Flames to do. Wait, Chris Broderick's in In Flames? As a live member. Oh, uh, okay. I was going to say, like... I, I, I don't know if he officially joined yet. Metal Archive says he's not. I, I didn't hear... I was going to say, I didn't hear much Chris Broderick guitar soloing on Eye the Mask. Oh, no. Even though Eye the Mask is probably their best album they've released since Clayman. But uh, they also confirmed their album title... Ooh. The Sick, the Dying, and the Dead by huh. Megadeth. Oh. And uh, Dave Mustaine did his final vocal take on a cameo, and now they're in the middle of mixing. Okay. And they just kicked off their tour. Well, shit. I mean, I'm, I like the naming structure for it. It reminds me of old school Megadeth. Yeah, when they had like three word song titles, yeah. <laughs> album titles. You got, so uh, Killing is My Business and Business is Good. Peace sells, but who's buying? So far, so good. So what? And then you, then you got... Actually, the next album for that was Rest in Peace, wasn't it? No, it was... I think it was Euthanasia first. It was Euthanasia, then Rust in Peace, and then... Really? Holy yeah. Crap. Euthanasia was in a... I thought Euthanasia was after a countdown to extinction. I don't think it was. Shit. I thought that was before it. That's a good album. Oh, yeah. Megadeth, honestly, up until Risk, Megadeth had an untouchable record, in my opinion. Yeah. Yes, I'm counting Cryptic Writings. That album's a fun rock album. Some some could say that, yes. I would say not. You don't like Cryptic Writings? No. Oh. I, I'm, I'm a biased Metallica fan, man. I mean, yeah, fair enough. <laughs> I, I still like Megadeth, but uh, I don't know. Dave can't sing. <laughs> what? <laughs> Hot takes here. Hot, the hottest <laughs> takes. Uh, you, want, you want a hot take? I like KK Ryder better. The oh. little dog man from. Oh, the, I, <laughs> is that KK? Is he the? Is that what's KK's pre sale about? It's just an Animal Crossing tribute band. Yeah. Fuck. Animal Crossing tribute band. Yeah, because Hellfire Thunderbolt's all about Tom Nook fucking his <laughs> residents with how much taxes they have to pay. <laughs> KK K. K. Ryder is a far better, far superior musician. <laughs> he can play everything. Oh, he, he truly can. Travuli can. Travuli. I do have some Judas Priest news, but we'll get to that after the big thrash stuff here. And uh, Anthrax, they ha they are releasing a new album in 2022. Fucking finally! According to Frank Bello, and saying that COVID pushed everything back. Yeah. And uh, Frank kind of gave an insight on how they write in their travel plans oh? for when they write. So they travel to each other because they all live at different locations mm -hmm. for some reason. So Frank either flies from L.A. or Chicago or they come to New York huh. or L.A. So I assume that because we all because I know Frank Bello lives in New York mm -hmm. from sources. And I don't know the man. <laughs> Yeah, we we talk. We have coffee every Friday. And from <laughs> and from what I hear, uh, Charlie Bonante lives in Chicago. I think that's yeah. I think that's because I I think yeah. I see his Instagram. He goes to a lot of Bulls games with his girlfriend slash wife, whatever. Mistress. So I'd assume that Scott Ian lives in L.A. Where does Joey Belladonna live? Who knows? Kentucky. Kentucky. I mean, he, he uh, might be uh, living across the road. He, uh, I, that, that'd be neat. I mean, it, that, that'd be pretty fucking cool. It, 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 yeah. hey, what are no, you? Wheel, wheel, wheelchair man lives next door. Are you a millionaire? What are you doing in an apartment? <laughs> <laughs> He's living in a box. Living, living in a cardboard, cardboard box. <laughs> but that's uh, so good news from all the surviving big fa four bands. No kidding. I'm fucking pumped. We have. I'm sick of Anthrax taking forever to release albums, goddammit. No shit. When was For All Kings? Like, 2016. Oh, fuck. That long already? They have a, they've had a longer hiatus than 
fuck it, or the only one who's beat them right now for albums I'm dying to hear from is fucking Symphony X. Yeah. Granted, Why are you dragging your ass, Russell Allen? Granted, from what I've heard, the reason Symphony X isn't doing much is because, one, Mike LaPond is as bad as Russell Allen. He's in fucking everything. Yeah. Oh, and um, some sad news. Uh, Joel Hook's just 13 uh, album running games, even though it has Russell Allen on it. It's pretty rough. <laughs> It's Joel Hoekstra. But even for that, like... Russell Allen typically can make anything good. Tony, it's 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 Joel Hoekstra. Yeah, but you, you hype up Foghat all the time. What? Joel Hoekstra's from Foghat, isn't he? No. Oh. God, no. No, he's in... He was in Night Ranger, dude. Oh. Oh, never mind. Okay, yeah, that all makes sense now. Okay. Yeah. No. no he, I shouldn't have hoped for that album and, at and all. And Trans-Siberian Orchestra. And oh, God. White Snake now. Oh God! <laughs> fuck's up with White Snake's lineup? I'm still baffled by yeah. that. Yeah. Well, I, dude, I don't know who the fuck's in White Snake. <laughs> I know David Coverdale's in White Snake. David Coverdale, you got fucking uh, what's his name? Reb Beach. Reb Beach is in there. You yeah, got, he's a good guitar player. Mm, I think it's like I, I don't like saying Italian names. I always feel like I fucked them up. But the old lead singer for Secret Sphere and Vision Divine, like, mm, oh yeah, I think it's I think I. He's a he's a guy, but I think his name's Michelle. <laughs> it's spelt that way. Michelle. Michelle Loopy. What a bitch. <laughs> he's their keyboardist and guest vocalist. But yeah. He's just gonna start pulling out the old the old swear words at us in the, in the comments. He's he's Michaela. He's Michaela. You um, fucking ignorant. Well, you know what we have to say to that. If you really have a problem with it, you can just break the silence and scream. Ah! <laughs> I still love that. That's oh, what Jesus Christ! <laughs> I still love that's what you thought they were saying. Yeah, well, there, there. I would genuinely did not know what they were saying in that song. I didn't know that they were screaming loud. I thought they were just screaming. <laughs> break, ah! break the silence! Screaming! Ah! <laughs> it's the like goddamn David Lee Roth joint ah! vision. Of- <laughs> but uh. Yeah, um, but Symphony X, from what I've heard, pretty much, with how albums work nowadays, they have no desire to really release a new one because they just straight up don't believe in the music industry anymore. Ouch. That and with all the shit that happened with Russell Allen, I'm pretty sure they just took a long break for it so he could recover for to like re-enter the world of music for recording other than like side projects. Oh, that yeah. Michael Romeo's fingers are still on fire. <laughs> yeah, we're waiting for them to go out before the new album. <laughs> How else he, he doesn't exercise, so he just kind of lets his f- fingers stay on fire yeah. for a while. That's kind of yeah. how he burns calories. Literally burning calories. I can never have a cold drink, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you guys want to hear some spicy beef? Some spicy, spicy beef. beef? Some real spicy beef? Who's huh? got beef? We got uh, Gene Simmons and David Lee Roth <laughs> going at it. <laughs> The two prima donnas. Exactly. The of the egos. fucking queens. Jesus. Gene Simmons started it, believe it or not. Oh? So first, Kiss kicked off David, kicked David Lee Roth off their tour. <clears throat> oh, shit. Because David Lee Roth's a better singer than Gene Simmons. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> and that's saying a lot, because David Lee Roth just cannot sing. No, that's why I said He's also it. a far better bass player. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> and, um... <laughs> So he was saying, like, you know, Dave was, he was good back in the day, but now he just sucks pretty much. <laughs> saying he doesn't know what happened to David Lee Roth. As much as I don't like uh, David Lee Roth as a person, a different kind of truth is better than anything Kiss has released since 1990. If we're being quite frank, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, I, I don't even you know I don't even like that album but it's better than anything Kiss have released like I, I listened to that over Sonic Boom oh, fuck yeah I wonder how many drag queens Kiss has inspired over the years honestly <laughs> <laughs> but, especially uh, Gene Simmons with his long flowing fake locks and long tongue <sighs> and his fucking dress <laughs> But uh, David Lee Roth responded with a picture on his Instagram of a kid flipping him off. Oh. <laughs> and then Gene Simmons came out again just like a day after and said, 
Oh, Dave, I'm sorry I hurt your feelings. For those that didn't know, I actually discovered Van Halen in a club and brought him to New York and produced their first demo. Oh, shut the fuck up. Yeah, that's what I said, too. There's no feelings in rock and roll, Gene. David Lee Roth didn't get hurt by your feelings. He hears worse things, like, every day, I'm sure. I mean, he probably hears worse things just from Sammy Hagar. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking A right. And Sa- yeah, Sammy Hagar had a little bit to say on <laughs> the comment too. Oh, somebody somebody asked him about his uh, about that on his Instagram, and he just responded with laughing emojis. <laughs> <laughs> David Lee Roth and Gene Simmons getting into a bitch and fight. Whoever's the biggest bitch in prima donna like, in rock music, and Sammy Hagar just I'm gonna stay here, just just chilling in Cabo. <laughs> but. I don't know. Gene Simmons is definitely the bad guy in this situation. Oh, fuck yeah. And plus to say it like that, like, I'm sorry I hurt your feelings. I discovered you. You should really, like, you should fuck up bow there, down. Gene. Just fucking dumb. You know Van Halen got into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, like, ten years before Kiss did? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm sure, sure he's but, still pissed off about that. Oh, yeah. So. I'm sure he is. He's a petty bitch. As much as KISS did change the live scene for rock for a while there, they didn't change the entire foundations of rock music with their legendary debut album. They just kind of had makeup and one-hit wonder-style songs. They just happened to strike gold a few times before turning into shit. Van Halen 3. Van Halen may have made Van Halen 3, but they didn't make The Elder. Or a Psycho Circus. Or Sonic Boom. Or a Monster. (laughs) I'd much rather listen to Sane Anger. I'd love to listen to Stanger over any of those albums. I'd listen to Stanger over Kiss any day. But you know what's... uh, So uh, now, new developments have happened with Kiss lately. You don't say. They canceled their show because uh, your boy Paul Stanley's got COVID now. Oh, Oh, shit. And, um... I wonder what G- I, I I really wanted to hear what Gene Simmons had to say about that because he says anybody that gets a that doesn't get a vaccine's a fucking idiot. <sighs> oh boy! How the turntables! <laughs> How the turns have tables! Oh, uh, dude, that's such a fucking dumpster fire. Fucking kiss. Speaking of some more great value, Ted Nugent. Great some more fun value, news Ted though. Nugent. Some better news. Um, I forget who it exactly is, but um, I was listening to an album yesterday, uh, the newest album, The Mutiny by Molly Baron. It's this almost southern rock style, uh, it's, it's, I, I shit you not, southern progressive metal. Really? Yeah, it, it fucking kicks ass, and there was a guest vocalist who was, uh, the old lead singer of Ugly Kid Joe, I don't remember his name. Oh, shit. But, uh. He, um, I've actually found out recently, um, he said that he was actually up for uh, grabs to replace Rob Halford and Judas Priest for a bit there. Really? But he actually said, nah, you can't, there is no other Rob Halford. I can't do that. Like, just like, there's no David Lee Roth. And I'm like, I'm, well, I don't like you comparing Rob Halford to David Lee Roth there, but at the same time, I mean, for like legendary status and oh, frontman yeah. status, I will give David Lee Roth credit then. Like, the only person who could have replaced him was Sammy. Like, oh yeah, definitely. And replace him, he did. Yes, he did. You okay. know, you know what's funny on on Facebook. I follow the David Lee Roth Mojo Dojo, and I also follow Sammy Hagar's Red Rockers. Yeah. <laughs> on Facebook, oh my God, it's like it's a war over there. Oh. It's a fucking war zone oh, every yeah. time I go on there. I might need to join that Sammy Hagar one because I fucking love Sammy Hagar. And I'm still, I'm still a David Lee Roth purist myself. I can respect the albums, and Mean Street has probably one of the best riffs ever put to music in general. Oh, definitely. But I'm, I'm biased. I, I like I like Power Ballad of Van Halen more than Hard Rock and Van Halen, personally. <laughs> I sh- Although I do like Crackhead David Lee Roth better than I like <laughs> Drunk Sammy Hagar. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> uh, I'll, be, I'll be perfectly honest. David Lee Roth did have a better string of albums because by the end of Sammy Hagar's tenure, it was getting a little rough. Balance was pretty ass. Yeah, it was pretty ass. But my favorite album was right before it, though, so... Oh, did you know that the the child from the Balance album uh, is suing Van Halen now for fear of uh, playgrounds? 
Oh, I, what I, I, I did hear about that because the uh, the kid on the front cover of the EP Jar of Flies by Allison Change is suing them for fear of bugs. And oh, did you God. know that the kid in the uh, first Corn album suing them because of fear of swing sets? And did you know that the baby from Nevermind grown up is being a fucking dumbass? He's suing Nirvana, the estate of Kurt Cobain, for oh god, what is it like? Millions of dollars. He's suing yeah. Chris, Dave Grohl, and Courtney Love. For, oh, but he's suing them for sexual exploitation. The baby from the Nevermind cover. I, I don't even for sexual exploitation. Yeah, yeah. because he was naked in a pool. Mm-hmm. Because they commercially sold child pornography worldwide. Someone call the Scorpions. No shit, right? <laughs> what, are you going to take down Van Halen 1984, too? <laughs> I mean, well, actually, to be it, fair with, like, the Scorpions one, that one was a little, like, that was pretty sketch. <laughs> but, to, but to be fair, uh, throughout his whole life, he's recreated that Nevermind album cover for years to come now. Guess life comes at you fast when you're broke, huh? Seriously. No I mean, like, I remember seeing a fucking interview with him, and he's like, yeah, I'm glad it was pretty cool that I was there. Yeah. So he's like, like, he liked it for the longest time, but now, now I'm guessing he's just fucking broke. He's being a bitch. <clears throat> and that should, uh, that should sway any fucking court, how often he was fucking portraying himself in the, in the cover. If anything, he should get sued for uh, <laughs> fucking for making child for, for making child Jesus <laughs> Christ, that's that'd be that'd be a turn. Or oh, yeah. he was, or I saw comments like, "Sue the parents. No They're shit. the ones that gave him permission." No shit, seriously though. Or so fucking. Stupid. Or better yet, fucking accept that you were on a legendary album cover. Come on. No kidding. That that Although, album changed the '90s, man. Although, I could happily just let him sue Courtney Love for really yeah, anything. Yeah, honestly. Because that bitch doesn't deserve a cent she has. Yes. She should be in a card... She should be living in a box. Living in a cardboard box. She should be in jail because she joined O.J. Simpson in getting away with murder. A couple oh. times. Because I, I truly believe that... As much as I believe that Suge Knight killed Easy e I believe that Courtney Love killed Kurt Cobain. I mean... Pretty much, it's damn near a mayhem situation. It just for some reason, she won the public's favor. Well, she didn't win the public's favor, but at the same time, she's just a the crack mayhem situation, huh? Do you believe that Varg killed Euronymous? Allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> <laughs> it was self defense. I stabbed him 17 times. I don't know, he just turned into Jason Voorhees all of a sudden. You're dead suing, suing the shotgun for murder? <laughs> He's suing the NRA. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. Oh my god, that's fucking terrible. But yeah, kid on Nirvana cover, because I don't have the... Don't know your fucking name. Don't care about your name anymore either. Quit being a bitch. <laughs> Seriously. You know who else that needs to stop being a bitch that's getting into the courtroom now and is in a lot of trouble? Who? Mr. Tommy Vexed. Who? Tommy Vexed. Who the fuck is Tommy Vexed? The the guy that did the What's in Your Head song. What in your head? Oh God, zombie? Yeah. Oh God, from wait, from did, Bad did... Wolves and Five Flavored Fruit Punch. He's in Five Flavored Fruit Punch? No, he he replaced Ivan Moody for a couple of shows. What? Uh, like years ago, because I... Ivan Moody was going through rehab. I mean, which time? <laughs> But yes, Tommy Vexed of Bad Wolves is in a lot of trouble. What'd he do? So first, 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 like, oh no. uh, um, like I was going to say a mile ago, a month ago, he sued his manager, Alan mm. Kovac, a couple of weeks ago for breach of contract for $10 million and told the media that he was racist and that, uh, here, let me get the whole thing. So he claims that Alan Kovac was racist and told him that he wasn't black enough to be in Black Wolf in Bad Wolves. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> because of his political stance and support of Donald Trump and would often use racial slurs around him. However, 
Alan has shut all that down and is very disappointed in Tommy and has never had a problem with anybody in the 40 years of music experience that he's been in. Let me guess. He's getting sued for slander. Because little did he know that Alan Kovac owns Better Noise Music, a record company, which has money. (laughs) And now he's getting sued for copyright infringement because Tommy really fucked up. He he, uh, released it unreleased Bad Wolves songs huh. without their permission. Yeah, that's that's a breach of contract right and there. And is trying to hamper with the Bad Wolves trademark, a band that he's left in January. The plaintiffs say that Vexed is motivated by greed and his oversized ego, mm. claim that he owns Bad Wolves and has a right to block the remaining members from recording or releasing music under the name. Oh my god. And they continue... Vexed retaliatory conduct is getting worse by the day. Now he's promoting his own tour using a confusingly similar name, Bad Wolves, which is spelled B at D W eight L V three S in a blatant attempt to confuse concert goers. God, you're fucking stupid, Tommy. That's like, that's like... <laughs> you really fucked up. Was... I, you have to actually try to fuck up this bad. Seriously. (laughs) Like, this isn't just no, oops, I accidentally did that. No, you had to try to fuck up that bad. He wasn't even a founding member of Bad Wolves, was he? I don't, I don't fucking know. I I mean, who fucking knows about Bad Wolves? But still. And I'm sure Bad Wolves doesn't have any fans now because of it. I mean, did they really have any fans other than liking the song, their cover of Zombie because they weren't the original writers of it either? It was yeah, like, was it the cherry bomb or some uh, shit? Like it was not cherry not bombs. bombs. No, it was, it was uh, a fucking. I thought it was like cherry something. Fuck if I. I can't well, remember. I'm not a fan of the song. Neither am I. But I just fucking heard it a lot when it first came out, and then heard that it was a cover of a cover of a cover. The cranberries. <laughs> yeah, that's what it was. <laughs> but um, I, th- yeah. I knew it was a fruit. <laughs> I don't know, I think, I think it's kind of funny that uh, Tommy Vexed is crying about uh, Alan being racist when he said himself that racism doesn't exist. Huh? <laughs> uh, yeah, he, and um, just to kind of give a little little rap sheet here of everything that he's done, you know, he's kind of, he's, I think he's been accused of like abusing his bandmates and his girlfriends and is a avid QAnon supporter. Oh, God! <laughs> so he's living in Cuckooville. Oh, God! <laughs> well, I mean, there you go, right there. He lives in the QAnon world. The fucking, the land of make-believe. All these fucking <laughs> QAnoners need to go over need to get medicated for their goddamn schizophrenia. This I, is coming from a schizophrenic, by the way. God. God. I'm surprised he didn't blame Tom Hanks for everything. Because he's one of the Hollywood elites, man. I don't care. He's, oh, he's a lizardman. He's, he's a, a god <laughs> damn lizard man. He's got a zipper on the side of his face. <laughs> don't care if you're a liberal, don't care if you're conservative, but if you're a QAnon, you're a fucking idiot. Full stop. That's not, it's not political at this point. No, it's in, it's a cult. It's a literal cult. Yeah, well, I, there was seriously a dude who was out trying to assassinate members of just general the general community uh but he was going after like hollywood elites because they were lizard people i was and he was trying to kill regular people because it was like what was it he killed his daughter because she or like his mother her mother was uh Apparently, some sort of lizard person, yeah, and it no. infected his daughter. Yup. And then he fucking shot his daughter in the face, and then went out to try to kill like like Tom Hanks or some shit mm-hmm. like that. I think it actually was Tom Hanks, one of the people he was trying to kill. But it's like, what the fuck is wrong with you people? And then like a bunch of QAnoners were like, "Oh yeah, you're doing the good the good work, brother." Okay, I actually I was talking with my boss recently about this actually. About the insanity of QAnon because, uh, well, uh, I'm not going to get into that little part because uh, that's... Um, anyways, uh, let's just say I have family issues with QAnon. <laughs> you know, I love memes too, but I don't worship them. No kidding. <laughs> you see, there, was a, there was a QAnoner who was going to a place, I don't remember exactly where it was, but he was going there because he was going to shut down the, uh, oh god, what is it? The, 
the, the QAnons are convinced that the Hollywood elite are grinding up like orphans and running a sex ring and eating orphan meat and all that. The dude went to take down a like factory for it that they were they were mulching and turning children into food so they can all eat them <laughs> in the basement of this building. He brought a gun into the building. The building didn't have a fucking basement. The building didn't have a fucking basement. Fucking old bud. <laughs> there, there's a cognitive dissonance with these people. It is a genuine lack of connection to reality. I put them in the same category as I put, like, fucking conspiracy theorists, dude. So, like, hardcore. conspiracy theorists. Like, it's like Bender getting into D&D and Futurama. You know, Good I'm, lord, I'm it's say, stupid. For, like, the craziest conspiracy theories... Usually, they at least have some sort of circumstantial proof. It's not even proof, but it's some. It's not even obviously not real. It's like a Photoshop picture. But at least in their fucking drug-addled minds, they can somehow believe that this dude has, like, lizard eyes. Or, like, fucking... Oh, he blinked too quickly. He blinked right as they were taking the picture... And it's like you can kind of see his eyes half open, half closed. So he's got a third lid, like, like a goddamn serpent. You know, if he was a really, a, if these people were really lizard people, don't you think we'd known would have known by now? Oh I mean, no, they they they, <laughs> they control our brains. They through the food and the in the media we take in. That's why I I, I personally uh, don't watch any any uh, uh, major news networks. I don't listen to any major. I don't listen to any major fucking musics. I make my own. I may, uh, I piss in bottles. I shit in jars. <laughs> that way they can never get any of my DNA to make my make clones of me because they know I'm far too powerful. Jesus Christ. No one told them about Brotherhood of the Snake by Testament. I think they'd take it to heart. It's, it's out of here. You, want some, you have something to tell us, buddy? Have you have, have you been peeing in the bottles again? Have you been shit in the cabinets? <laughs> yep. God damn it, Tyler. Shit in the cabinets. Gotta do another intervention. I'll fill them up. I'll fill them up this time too. God damn it! Oh, God, S- stock them full, <laughs> rack them high. Fucking Man. chewing on her is making heaven's gate look rational. So S- fucking seriously, Tommy. We want to just leave music. Want to just leave? You're never gonna have a career after this. It's done. Can, can, can it's have, over. Can we have people in music to stop ruining their careers by being stupid? Can, can, can we have smart people make music again, please? Well, then we wouldn't have this podcast, Tony. I mean, you got a point there. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, kind of only, only cover really stupid people. Well, dude, we cover good news, too. I mean, too. yeah, we do. But... Speaking of good news, I'm going to turn it around just because it's getting fucking just depressing in the mind that people are fucking stupid. Bloodstock. Judas Priest closed it out with one hell of a set. Yeah, they did. They played one shot at glory, They dude. played Rockarola. And I was telling Tyler, with Redeemer of Souls and Firepower, Rockarola doesn't sound that weird live anymore. Oh, no. Like, with songs like, you know, Crossfire, March of the Damned, and good old, uh... Actually, you know, Firepower didn't have that many, like, bluesy tracks, but, like, songs like Crossfire... Rockarola fits right in with their set list nowadays. Oh, definitely. And Glenn joined them, and like, I've never i I've seen them twice. I have never been more excited to see Jesus Priest than on this tour. Hell for how yeah. much they're pulling out the fucking stops. They opened with one shot at Glory. They opened with that is one hell of an opener. Ow. They are definitely <laughs> not going to open it up with our show, though. I don't believe it. Why do you say that? Because Bloodstock's in Europe. European fans are cooler than American fans. They, they pulled out some stops when I saw them. Mm. They, 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 they respect their I mean, American fans. I mean, Alfred it, lives in America more than he does Britain now. I mean, it, it. yeah, but those European fans are more intense. Us, I, You know, I I was talking to this with the band the other day. American fans are they're kind of lame, always on their phones recording everything. Yeah, I, I'm grateful the shows I've been to. It hasn't been too rampant, but yeah, I completely understand where you're coming from. That's kind of a problem with a lot of... A lot of you Americans. A lot of you goddamn Americans. <laughs> so I still I still hold the uh, hold, hold fast on the, the, the fact that I'm a Canadian. <laughs> uh, 
you fucking Americans. <laughs> uh, just, I don't know. It, it seems like a lot of Americans don't really appreciate going to see music anymore. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's more, it's more the prestige of, oh, yeah, I saw this person live. Did you do? Did, did you actually listen to them? No, I was live streaming it on uh, fucking Instagram, talking to people on there, so, like acting like I know the band. Like there are people who bring headphones to a concert. Like I don't get that. Yeah. Why? Why are you? Why are you listening to other music while at a fucking concert? Why did you go to the concert in the first place? I, honestly, I think it's just that uh, American tastes in rock music are just. Shit. <laughs> Damn. Then I don't think. Well, it's the thing. Respect. Mm-hmm. There isn't any. No. I mean, like, let's all be honest. Elitism. They're mostly American fans with all the fucking elitism in metal. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Well, I can give us one thing. We know how to talk shit. Yeah. That's <laughs> <laughs> so, so all. It's the whole podcast right here. Yeah. <laughs> it's us talking shit at people when we're no fucking better. And uh, mostly, <laughs> most of the time, if I'm yeah. sure everybody's known, we goof. Oh yeah, <laughs> and we we love to have like any of these people that we talk about on the show. Oh fuck yeah! But we we're, we're just goofing most of the time. Most of the time. Yeah, I think I. I mean, Except for I will... Gene Simmons, I would love him on to come on the show so I could fucking shit talk him to his face. I will. Oh, admit, yeah, I will admit that uh, power metal does kind of have a nice little niche here in in Minnesota at least for. All the shows I've gone to for power metal, the people who go to it are genuinely dedicated fans. Like, the Camelot show I went to, almost no one had their phone out. They were all just vibing with the music. I believe it. And Snot Arctica fans are just fucking scary. Well, that's that's because we're all German and Norwegian up here. <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's like a homeland for us, you know? <laughs> Camelot has gone on record multiple times. I mean, it's a typical thing. This, this, vi- this insert state here is the best one for this kind of show. I mean, I, I, I will, I will notice that, uh, I have noticed, um, watching live footage, we do, we do go ham around here for, for bands that kind of, like, show up here, especially, of what, uh, our, the Omana March show was pretty fucking nuts, like, looking at the footage from that tour. We oh, went, yeah. We went pretty nuts. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Tell- <laughs> Tony and I scared a couple of people that were in front of us, though. <laughs> I was headbanging too to- hard. So Tony has the has long hair, and I was a bald boy back then. And uh, we were up in the balcony, and Grand Magus was there. So Tony and I were really digging it, and we were just headbanging to some good old doom. And I was pretty trashed. <laughs> and, yeah, and Tony was pretty shitty. And uh, this uh, this woman and her boyfriend looked up at us and... They thought somebody was breathing on her neck when it was Tony's hair in the wind. <laughs> How could I not head bang to Iron Will? You gotta get the full body with that one, man. And she was just like, oh shit, I thought somebody was breathing down my neck. It's just your hair making the wind. I'm just that fucking majestic. <laughs> like, I have power metal hair, okay? Oh it's, my god. It's a natural fan to look majestic while riding a horse and, you know, rocking a keytar. <laughs> fucking A, right? I can't wait for you to go bald. Ha! I can't wait for you to go bald. Keeps is helping me. It's working, damn it. I can't Sponsored wait by for Keeps. You to go bald. I fucking wish. Fuck. I will. I... Are you are you starting soon? I want to, yeah. Do it. I, I will. It's 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 expensive. It, it it works though, man. Like it's only like seventy bucks like every three months. It's it it fucking works, dude. Like my hairline is actually coming back. Mm. I was starting to get a widow's peak. And oh, Tyler was ecstatic there. about it. It's getting better. <laughs> you getting... see, it's not that it's coming back. It's that this is receding. Tyler, you just want me to be bald so you look more natural <laughs> next to me. <laughs> just because you have hair down here, I get to keep the stuff up here. You get the beard, I get the hair, okay? <laughs> so Tyler's our douchebag of the week this week. <laughs> <laughs> just desperately wanting me to go bald. Well, I'm, I'm doing a lot of shit talking this episode, so I mean, I, I guess. It's <laughs> feeling a little spicy today. Nah, I'm voting douchebag of the week is just still KK for being a pretentious cunt. Uh, or Gene. Or, or Ingve. Tommy Vex. I mean, or we, Ingve. Have, we have a plenty to fucking choose from. Oh, you do, you guys. You know what I witnessed yesterday? Hmm. I went on to the live stream at a perfect time. Mr. Yeah. Michelangelo Badio had his oh. live stream yesterday. Oh. And he was on a rant. 
What was he talking about? Because all everybody says all he does is play fast. <laughs> and he was addressing these rumors. And he was pissed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he, he knows that, that we're all right. No, <laughs> you know what? I play... Like, check out this lick from this song. It was like a song that... Okay. It's like a song that nobody fucking knows that he played. And just like, you can hear melody in every single song that I have done. It's I don't only just play fast. I'm like, okay, well... What about Nitro, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> all of Nitro. Yeah, well, that was just a spectacle, I'm sure. Look, buddy. I, I thought it would... I hopped on at the perfect time. I threw my hands up in the air. I fucking pulled my pants down. Took oh. a big old duke right on the hood of my car. <laughs> I mean, Michelangelo Badio, you're, you're the second best guitarist with three names. <laughs> who's, who's the first? Actual Rudy Pell. Who the hell is that? He's, uh, well, he, honestly, he's just a really fucking great guitarist. He hasn't been in a lot of, like, his most famous work is his solo work. But the thing is, he's given Johnny Gioli work after Crush 40 is pretty much what's going on. Um. And just, honestly, he hasn't had a bad record. It's all fucking solid heavy metal slash power metal. I, st- I still put Eddie Van Halen if we're going into the three. I suppose he, he, I guess, I guess he, he's, he, yeah, he did something here and there. He made an album or two, I guess. Fuck <laughs> you. <laughs> nah. Yeah, yeah, no, it, it. I'm throwing my hat in the ring for Eddie Money Rooney. Eddie Money Rooney. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, oh, you guys want to hear some good news that I heard? Hmm. We're getting that new Black Label Society. Finally. Yes. God damn it, damn it. Can't wait to hear the guy who's ripping Doom. off Richie Faulkner play more. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Doom Crew Incorporated. That's a new album name? Yes. I love nice. it. Nice. And they came out with a new music video where it's like a old 50s tap dancing oh swing. God. Fuck yeah. And it's fucking awesome, and I cannot wait, because I fucking love Black Label Society. I really yeah. wish they would have titled their last album better, because it, no... I wouldn't have guessed it was a new album. I thought it was a Greatest Hits album. What, the Grimmest Hits? The uh, Grimiest Hits. I thought it was a Greatest Hits album. Oh, Whoa, it's yeah. all new music. I'm just glad because, yeah, Zach Wilde's finally doing something with Black Label Society again. Because he's just been on like his solo work and doing work with The Boss. Yeah. Who he calls Mr. Ozzy Osbourne, of course. I'd still fuck The I, Boss. As much as I'm happy that he's back playing with Ozzy... I really wish he was writing music with him. Yeah, me too. Don't we Granted, all? I wouldn't want. I don't want another Black Rain, but <laughs> at the same time, I mean, Zach Sabbath, it exists. And Zach Sabbath is pretty rad. I fucking yeah. love Zach Sabbath. Wish I could have gone to see him. You know. Right? Yeah, yeah. Never mind. Never mind. <laughs> Keep going. Go okay. ahead. All right. I, I, I decide against saying what I wanted to say. Okay. But, uh, yeah, so that's good news out of the Black Level Society camp. Uh, there was a tour that I was really excited about, but then I got super disappointed in. Oh. One of my favorite death metal bands is going on tour now. Ooh. And I can't see them, because they're not coming anywhere here. Oh. Fucking sleeping babies. Sleeping little tiny cherubim, cherubim babies. <laughs> that's... It's good, some good church music. It's not sleep. They're not sleeping, they're dead. And they weren't a baby yet. (laughs) Well, we want to get this video monetized, don't we? (laughs) I'm just kidding. A dying fetus. Okay, and um, also, uh, it was on a podcast while back. Destroying the uh, the Opposition. That was an Unleash the Archers album. Oh, yeah. I was thinking of... uh, I completely forgot it, but it's the one with Uncle Sam on the album cover. It was the one I was thinking of. Yeah, that's... That's killing on adrenaline. Is it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But Destroy the Opposition... For some reason, I was thinking Destroy the Opposition was a Dying Fetus album. No, that was an Unleashed the Archers album. Destroying the Opposition is not is a Dying Fetus song. Ah. Which is on Killing on Adrenaline. Ah. No lights. Yeah. I like the idea of sleeping babies. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and it's what uh, Gonillock calls him for his... Uh, bastardized history <laughs> which is a great series on YouTube that everybody should watch if you're a metalhead really hope Sleeping Babies makes a new album I'm actually, I actually wouldn't mind it because uh, 
Um, I was saying it before the podcast. I'm disappointed in death metal this year. Me too, honestly. Like, I mean, uh, don't get me wrong. Um, how, how to put it? Uh, Hungry Cadaver. I'll, I'll go with that instead of their actual name. <laughs> Hungry Cadaver. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know who I'm talking about? <laughs> Hungry Cadaver. Dude. Oh, fucking Cannibal Corpse. <laughs> That's a good one. I like that. Violence Unimagined is good, but I'm sorry, Red Red Before Black was better. I, it, it I had, disagree. It had more 150 percent. Well, I also love Red Before Black. I'm, I'm a weird Cannibal Corpse fan, though. I, I like their weird albums more than their their. I, honestly, like I like um, Red Before Black. I fucking love Kill. Everybody loves Kill. And um, I mean, well. Oh god, what is it? Vile, um, vile. That's that's a nah, nah. actually the first album with Corpse Grinder. I th- I'm actually not a big fan of that. No, uh, I think Vile's really fucking rough. Mm. It, they, they, they took his dick, man. They took his dick. I, I, I'm a I'm a diehard Cannibal Corpse fan. I even like Cookie Monster when he was in it. <sighs> I like I like every single Cookie Monster album except for his last one. That album fucking sucked. The bleeding is terrible. Oh yeah! I'm sorry. Oh yeah! I forgot about that. The bleeding is literally the first six feet under album, in my opinion. It's that fucking bad. Jesus. <laughs> but um, there's only been one big death metal album I fucking love this year so far, and that's uh, Necro Sapiens by B by. It, it, it's Beast, but it's B A B A E S T. Hmm. Hmm. But it Necro Sapiens by them. And it, it's fucking awesome. And uh we have um I actually I recommended to you them. Uh we have a we have a follow up, a band that's going to take Vector's place as a progressive thrash album. Oh. It's um the new album by Par- uh, Empyrean by Paranorm. Oh yeah. It fucking rips. Mm. Because I mean honestly, Vector, they had three perfect albums of progressive thrash and then fell off fucking hard. I, I even re-listened to their newest single after listening to the new album by Par- by Paranorm. Dude, it's bad. Their, their their most recent single, Vector single, I don't remember what the fuck it's called, but I listened to it after that. Oh, dude, yeah. Dude, Vector fell off hard. Oh, it's terrible. Like, fucking hey. <laughs> I am not a fan of Vector sound now. But, uh, you guys uh, hear about the tour that just got announced today? What? Uh, there's a European tour featuring... Power Wolf and Dragon Force. Oh, oh shit. shit, that's an. Oh yeah, I did hear about that. It's Power Wolf, Dragon Force, and who else? Uh, I'm seeing it right now. Oh yeah, and I guess they released a new music video today too. Power Wolf? No, uh, Dragon Force. Is there gonna be a new Dragon Force album? I d- doubt it. Oh. But uh, yeah, War Kings. Oh yeah. War Kings, they fucking slap. They're a really weird band, like, for the who's in it. It's really fucking weird. It's the lead singer Serenity and then a bunch of other death metal musicians mm. that play really <laughs> intense power metal. Like, it's not, like, fast, but it's really crunchy power metal. Interesting. Highly recommend it. I, w- I wish they would tour the United States for once. Yeah, well, I mean, the, you were saying it early. Respect. We don't respect, but American fans don't respect European power metal. Fucking a right. I mean, I don't think, I don't think most American fans of any music really respect the music at the show. I mean, let's be honest. I mean, like <laughs> blue. If you're going to go listen to blues, yeah, usually those people are pretty chill. But, like, <clears throat> I don't know. You go to a festival. Go to a festival in the United States, and the whole place is fucking trashed. And like, I don't know. I mean, that's also kind of a festival thing. Yeah. But. I mean, like, metal fans are nowhere near as bad as country fans. We've both worked, we've fested and seen the aftermath. Yeah, well, that. I mean, also <laughs> talking to people like, uh, like Van Halen, mm-hmm. uh, not, not that, not the Van Halen, no, this dude's nickname yeah. is Van Halen. Um, I think we talked about him on the podcast once, too. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, like he was talking to us that one time, uh, you know, you, you go and work a, a metal show and shit's fucking clean afterwards. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's still, like, general trash on the ground once in a while, but, like, 
He's like, yeah, you go to a, go to that place. It's fucking clean. It's usually pretty quick to get everybody out. No one's fucking bumbling over each, themselves, fucking puking on everybody else. I was astonished how fast that Volby show cleared out. Even yeah, like, they, like, that is instant thing that comes to mind. And then you go to like a fucking country show like We Fest. You have to fucking hose these people down as they're going out. I mean, we work the barn stage. The last band goes on at twelve thirty in the morning. It ends at two. There are people still trying to get uh, that are ranting one more song as we're tarping up the fucking uh, subwoofers. Seriously, and then there's you, then you get fuckers who are sitting there like f- literally fucking on the lawn mm-hmm. waiting for the show to come on, and then they get pissed off when we when we fucking tell them, hey, if you're gonna if you're gonna do that, we're gonna have to have the cops come and get you out of here. Or you know, Tiny will come movie, and I think he'd probably prefer the cops. <laughs> Seriously, God, I, mean, I, I still fuck. Especially that one fucking dude who was literally almost damn yeah. near broke that chick's back. Yeah, there was this dude. Okay, I'm not a small guy. If every, if any of you have ever looked at our fucking Instagram and shit like that, I'm a fat ass, <laughs> but I'm also like six four. And this dude made me look small. Like, this dude had to have been about 500 pounds and probably about 6'8". Jesus Christ. And this poor chick, she had to have probably weighed 100 pounds soaking wet and was maybe about 5'3". And he was leading... And there, you know, there's like a waist-high chain-link fence in front of the stage to keep people from bum-rushing the stage. Well, this fucker was sitting there, like, leaning on her. First, he he just had his gut over her back. And he's just fucking leaning on her. And then next thing you know, we hear, like, screaming from the poor girl. As he's, like, got his arm on her fucking chest. Like, the back of her... Well, the back of her chest. So, like, the top of her back, her shoulders and shit like that. And he's just, like, fucking leaning on her like she's a post. And we ended up having to get this dude, like, had to get a bigger dude, Tiny, to come and, like, pull him off of her because he just refused to get off of her. Jesus Christ. That country, like, is, I mean, barn stage is literally the creme de la creme of, you know, these are the the worst people at Wayfest. Seriously. I mean, well, I mean, there's people in the campgrounds that are actual degenerates, but... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it's, it's Wayfest. This, uh, the saying amongst the workers there is, it's not we fest till somebody dies. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Quite a few people have died at WeFest over the years. And it's all for <clears throat> fucked up. Re- like, 10K had less deaths than WeFest. Yeah. The actual fucking stoner fest. <laughs> well, yeah, because they're stoners, dude. But th- there was that one dude who ate his eyeball at 10K. Yeah, but that's because he was on... He, 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 he had, had a really bad yeah. acid. <laughs> Fun times. Don't take the brown acid. <laughs> the, Marsh- the Martians will come and take you. I really wish I was able to see the tour fucking obscure going on. They're going on tour now? Yeah, but it's in. It's only in Europe. Oh, lame. I think they're, yeah, I think they're uh, inferior open up for them. All right, back to back to more garbage. Okay, <laughs> more garbage. Oh, uh, there was a uh, somebody made the, their first public appearance for a little while oh. with a certain rapper. Uh, I'll give you guys a hint. It was the gay fish and the sexual assault champion of the world on stage together. So Kanye West yeah. and who? Marilyn Manson. Oh fuck. Fucking white Bill Cosby here. Is it bad when you said sexual assault champion of the world and the instant thing I went to was R. Kelly? Oh, damn. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, he hasn't popped up in a while. Holy shit. But yeah, I guess people are upset. Kanye West, Marilyn Manson. Who the fuck cares? No kidding, Kanye West. What, what, what did he do wrong, man? He didn't do nothing wrong. Huh? You, you come to me, I'll fight you. <laughs> but, come, come on. But Kanye, do you like fish sticks? Uh, of course I like fish sticks. Do you put fish sticks in your mouth? I mean, how else can you eat them? You, you know, if you can put them up your butt? Then you're a gay fish. I ain't no gay fish, <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> oh, you guys been hear something stupid? Hmm. Okay, so you guys know uh, Tony Hawk? 
Hawk. Yeah. Yeah, he uh, has his own blood-infused skateboards now. Blood-infused skateboards. Yeah, which is metal as fuck, if you ask it's me. It's pretty metal. And uh, it sold out, like, in 30 minutes. Out of stock. And uh, you guys know the uh, rapper Little Nas X? I've heard of him, yes. Yeah. He does oh, the yeah. uh, the horses in the back um, yeah. song. And, um, oh God, what else is it? It's fucking... Uh... He did that uh, "Call Me by Your Name" song that got really big recently. Yeah, but he, uh, he's the gay cowboy, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. But he is really upset that there's no public outrage over uh, Tony Hawk putting blood in his skateboards because he put blood in his knockoff Air Maxes <clears throat> during that song. Which uh, so let's go over this. Little Nas X, they weren't mad because you put blood in your shoes they were mad because you gave a lap dance to satan in your music video <laughs> and knocked off nike air maxes which got you sued by nike yeah you fucking degenerate <laughs> god damn it do you, you have to be some kind of special kind of stupid to think that people were actually upset that you put your own blood in shoes <laughs> load is blood and cum on the album cover <laughs> people have no problems with blood people probably have problems with lap dancing on satan <laughs> in a music uh, video oh. and for being completely naked in another music video yeah. and wanting to perform at the vmas naked on stage which i wouldn't be surprised if it passed because we pretty much saw people scissoring at the grammy awards this last year what yeah, the Cardi B and... Oh, God. Yeah, yeah Megan, Megan the Stallion. I mean, to be fair, to be fair, he should be allowed to play naked if he wants to <laughs> because of how many females have played naked at all these fucking award shows. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So one dude with a swanger out isn't, isn't as bad as, like, 16 women all, like, fucking bouncing around with their tits out. I will ad I will admit to uh, Little Nas X. I actually don't hate him as a person for how much he pretty much did troll the entire like evangelical music scene because like he deliberately made "Call Me by Your Name" as an as a pretty much anti Christian gay anthem. Oh yeah, and like I absolutely loved the controversy and how mad people were. And yeah. him giving a lap dance to Satan. That was fucking hilarious. I thought I give him too. props for that. I mean, yeah, I can see how people are pissed, but I think it's funny. Come on, people, have a little fucking, he's have doing, a little bit of levity. He's literally doing it to dig a dig at the Christians, people. They don't need the fucking uh, good press. They're already fucking everywhere. But according to, like, the New York Times, uh, they're bringing the race issue into it now. Oh, God. So, people, yeah, so New York Times doesn't have any fucking common sense. P it's... It was all the Christians getting mad that they was lap dancing on Satan and that you got sued by Nike for making knockoff Air Maxes. So, but being the, fucking the, stupid. Yeah, the Nike thing, I fully endorse. Like, yeah. that he should be sued for that. Cause yeah, that's, that that's illegal. Stupid. Yeah, it's fucking illegal. It's like and, like, at this point, he's probably, he's got enough money, he should be able to afford... You know, well, I mean, the Nike wouldn't want their shoes in that video anyway, but... Yeah. You know, you know, he should, he could be able to afford like, oh hey, uh, fucking some random shoe company. Under mind, mind if I <laughs> mind if I buy the rights to use your shoe in a video for one for one fucking video. But this controversy stirred up so much that ESPN covered it, guys. Fucking e why? Because ESPN isn't just sports news anymore. They get into politics now. Why does sports need to be why does sports need to be political? Good fucking question, Tyler. Like I don't know. I'm not a big big sports guy. I don't make a big I don't, know, I don't make a big thing about sports, but like I do, however. That's one thing like okay, I I love hockey, but he, he, our, our friend Alex here is dressed almost head to toe in sports gear right now. So. Yeah. I have, <laughs> what do I have on? Oh yeah, my San Jose Sharks hat. He's wearing a Vikings jersey t-shirt. It's a Thielen jersey t-shirt because he's we're repping the home state. I mean, if the uh, what fucking XFL 
does come back. I'll watch that because that shit's funny. Oh yeah, it's fucking hilarious. Oh, People are throwing up on the field, and it's like <laughs> it's like in bench warmers. <laughs> I'm twelve. You're drunk. <laughs> That's pretty much XFL right there. I mean, the Owned by The Rock. XFL is pretty much just blitz this blitz the league, but in real life, pretty <laughs> much. <laughs> Okay, Although maybe. people have gotten signed to the NFL from being in the XFL. Yeah. So good for them. I mean, they had some good fucking people there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, it's like, well, I think we need something like the XFL, honestly, because there's a lot of dudes who, like, get cut. <laughs> Bless you, child. Bless your soul, but, uh, boy. Who, who get cut from the NFL for, like... Either being, you know, not quite fast enough or not being quite good enough, but they're still fucking good. Yeah. These people need, like, I mean, what are they gonna do? Go, go back to college? <laughs> These people have no. sustained too many fucking concussions to go back to college. <laughs> I can't. Uh, before football, I knew the the, the fish number. <laughs> the fish. I could. I like. I could count to fish when I was before football. I, I'm glad the XFL is a thing, because, uh, yeah, nobody watches the Canadian fucking football league or the arena football league. I mean, frankly, we just need straight up more competitors for all of the major actual sports things. So, one, we can start actually implementing some changes that are desperately needed to keep half of them relevant. And two, you know, some actual fucking inclusion. Yeah. Because... Fucking A. At least, I will say one thing. At least in the NHL, uh, if you're not good enough for one team, you can get to a different one. Oh, yeah. They're like... Well, the NHL and like MLB are super weird. Yeah. Because it's not just go right to college and to the pros like it is in the yeah. NFL and the... The fuck? Oh, the NBA. See, I forgot the NBA because it fucking sucks now. Yeah. <laughs> that but, is... A- with with the MLB and like the NHL, you have to go through like separate leagues if yeah. you don't go to college, and then you get drafted and you're not even like playing for the team yet. You still gotta go through their fucking triple A leagues and then the minors, and then you get to the majors. It's just a bunch of stupid shit that I have no time to pay attention to. <laughs> I mean, at least with fucking baseball. You get great games out of it. You get that, <laughs> yeah. that too. But like, if you're not, if you don't make it to the majors, or if you get cut from the majors, you can go back and still make a bunch of fucking money in the minors. Oh you yeah, can still have a career. Whereas if you don't make it as a pro in football, you're like the instant you leave and the NFL, you're forgotten. Yeah, it's pretty like, much. It's like college bowl and then NFL. It's that or nothing. Are you a superstar? Well, I thought I saw you playing in the Super Bowl last year. Yeah, I did. Can I can I help you finish checking out at Target now? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that's just... Well, that's the issue of fucking celebrity being more important than actual skill in sports nowadays. Yeah. No kidding. And can we do something about how people dress in the sports world, please? <laughs> you don't need to spend a million dollars on an outfit you're going to wear for one day. No kidding. What's this next hot up-and-coming person in the in sports ball wearing? I don't care. Can he fucking play? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and don't, and uh, for all of you listening at home, I am probably the most couldn't-give-a-fuck-about-sports person other than our roommate. <laughs> he likes yeah. the Twins. I, I, I love the Twins. I, I, I love baseball to death. Baseball is dope. Baseball is awesome. But... See, see, you got one thing. Yeah. I, and I, you know, there's another another great thing. AEW wrestling. Mm-hmm. Heck yeah. AEW signing... is keeping fucking the spectacle of wrestling alive. Fucking Tommy Dreamer is back. <laughs> And CM what? Punk. CM Punk is back, too. Oh, damn. Yeah. That, I, that's, I, that's actually really hype. And did you guys know that now Vince McMahon is all elite wrestling? I'm just playing. That's a meme that's going around <laughs> oh, everywhere. <God. laughs> but I heard Alistair Black, the most metal wrestler, is coming to AEW, too. Oh, yeah. Where, he met, where his t-shirts are written in black metal. <laughs> Fonts. I actually had a bit of a hilarious encounter at work this morning before I came home. There's a, 
a guy walked into the front area into the lobby and I asked him hey what, uh, what band is that on your shirt oh it's not a band that's actually a NASCAR team what yeah I, I, yeah the worst part is he actually didn't remember the name because he couldn't read it off of his shirt oh <laughs> but apparently there's a NASCAR team now that is doing black metal shirts the world needs more black metal <laughs> I mean we need more font we can't read because then you gotta look them up and then you get into black metal and I, then you get into arson Hooray, arson! You know who I think should change all their logos at all their stores around the United States to black metal? Lowe's? The United States Post Office. Yes. <laughs> Post! I, I, think, I think Home Depot should. Home Depot? <laughs> oh my... Man, that could... that. <laughs> I think we're we're influencing an act of van- vandalism here. <laughs> Everybody's just going to be spray painting everything in black metal. Fuck yeah. Oh my god. We do we do not endorse graffiti and art and crime in any way, but I mean, hey, if you want to make the Home Depot logo black metal, we're not going to stop you. We <laughs> and, we ain't the popo. And and if they do that, everyone at Home Depot has to wear corpse paint. <laughs> Fucking A right. That should be a law. And there's just got to be one guy dressed as a juggalo just to throw it off. I mean, Home Depot, you can get all the things you need to build your church so you can burn it later. <laughs> Your own miniature Fucking, church, so you oh can burn God. it at your own burn at home church. Why are they not advertising this? Come on, people! My baby's first church burning. Are you saying playset? Are you saying you don't want to hear that legendary Home Depot theme redone, but with blast beats and treble? I mean, fuck yeah. I mean, Jesus Christ, if only, like, the dude from Papa John's wore corpse paint. <laughs> if Papa John were... There we go, yeah. that'll, that'll be a rebranding that saves it. Make Varg the name of the face of your pizza. <laughs> I mean, Varg's probably a little less racist. <laughs> <laughs> I, t- I could see him, like, holding the pizza. All you transgender cannibals will love this pizza. <laughs> <laughs> holding up a pizza with just sauce on it. See, you can give me one that looks like the... <laughs> Looks like Don. This is a recreation of Don of the Black Heart. Jesus <laughs> Christ! The Pizza Hut's Don of the Black Hearts inspired pizza. It's just a pizza with just covered in sauce. <laughs> oh fuck! You know you guys know what I. So we've gotten our internet redid, right? Mm-hmm. And um, this meant that uh, I don't have cable anymore at my house. All right, well, sorry about that. Tell Tyler this, uh, Tyler. You know what I miss about not having cable the most? What's that? The 3 a.m. infomercials, my friend. I mean, fucking, I haven't seen no 3 a.m. commercials for a while now because I haven't had cable since I lived with my grandma. But like, well, some of them are fucking hilarious. Oh yeah. The other day I saw one. Like the day before we got rid of our cable, it was about a law firm. And uh, I was making sandwiches, like, right in the middle of the night. And this dude (laughs) really wanted to let you know that if you've been in an accident that's not your fault, then you can call us now (laughs) at this law firm. (laughs) Yeah, literally, he, like, put his arms out, and he's like, not your fault. And then they'd go on the phone with, like, customers while they're on the air, and somebody would be like, yeah, well, what do your rates look like? I will tell you that, Susan, but first I want to let our viewers know that if you've been in a car accident that's not your fault, you can get legal consultation from us from the number below. And then he (laughs) wouldn't even answer the fucking question, but keep (laughs) responding with, if you've been in a car accident that's not your fault, then you can get legal consultation from us right now. I swear I I heard him say that like 69 times in the matter of two minutes. (laughs) Didn't even fucking answer any of the questions. And then after, like, they'd be like, all right, well, now we're going to go to another commercial here. Right before it leaves, if you've been in a car accident, that's not your fault. Then you can call us now and get free legal consultation. <laughs> like, Jesus Christ, do you think do you think the elderly are looking at this like, fuck, I get it. <laughs> well, well, if it is my fault, no, if it's not, oh, if it's not my fault. Gary, you got plowed into the other day. I sure did, Martha. Ah, see, we could call him. No, wait, I got plowed the other day. Well, nothing. 
Fuck. <laughs> Jesus Christ. That's 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 just the one thing I'm gonna miss though. I I surely if if I had gotten into a car accident that wasn't my fault, yeah. I would have surely called that number. I mean, if you really miss it, they do have them on YouTube. Oh yeah, they do. <laughs> and uh, John Tron is the best for reviewing that oh, kind God, of I content. Know. Am I right? Seriously. <laughs> Bless oh, you. God. God damn. I'm allergic to everything today. Allergic to bullshit. Allergic to bullshit. And, and that dude who keeps going up and down our fucking road here. Yeah, I'm wondering, like, I'm gonna close this. Fucking yeah. Window. God damn. Apologies, everybody. It's... Everybody, shut the fuck up. It was a, it's the same truck that he does this every day. He goes up and down and just fucking revs his engine because he's got to show that he's got a huge cock. And uh, to quote every Minnesotan, man, that guy revving his truck is so cool, dude. <laughs> he's so fucking He's just cool. so cool, dude. But, yeah, I'm going to miss Cable. I really am. But at least now I got like six subscriptions going on at once now. Because <laughs> I just got Netflix back. There you go. And I was going to say, if you if you really need the, the, the TV experience, including probably some of the fucking uh, late night cable add-ons, uh, go Peacock. Oh yeah, that's what we're getting now. Yeah, I, I'm just using Peacock free stuff and... That, that's awesome. It's pretty much just TV with commercials in it. Yeah. It's like, I don't give a fuck about the goddamn commercials anyway. Seriously. Like, I was... Well, I've been watching wrestling again. It was WWE. I, How is it now? Okay. I wa- The one episode I watched the other day was actually really fucking good. Because... Uh, the New Day, Kofi Kingston and the uh, other... I can't remember what his name is. Yeah, uh, like w- Woods. Yeah, so one, one yeah. of them's Woods and one of them's like the other guy. The big the guy's big guy. gone. Yeah, the big guy's gone. I think they fired him. Oh shit! I think he's actually on AEW now. Oh really? Yeah. We need that some shit, huh? Like every like even uh, fucking Bray Wyatt, he's gone. They fired him. I believe it. He he was gonna be like the next. Undertaker, like even Undertaker is like, yeah, you get the supernatural shit now, but no. And they got they fired him. They got rid of Braun Strowman too, which yeah. is what I was really upset about. Yeah, oh God, yeah, fucking Braun Strowman getting canned made no goddamn sense. But of course, they like to keep fucking Roman Reigns and John Cena. Yeah. For God's sakes. Well, from what I understand, Vince is getting out of the game here, quick. I hope so. And he might be selling it to Disney. No. So WWE might be owned by Disney. No. Fuck. Really? Yet. Yeah. So it's not. I, it's not a for sure thing yet. But Disney might be, for some reason, buying the WWE. Dude, Disney's gonna buy fucking everything. I know. That's why I'm getting so pissed off about all this shit. I mean, kind of random topics for our uh, our metal podcast here, but. Uh, <laughs> well, it's well, we talk about everything on this. We podcast. do, we do talk about everything, but um, like Disney, I I used to love Disney. I want nothing to do with Disney now. Oh yeah, because they're f- buying everything and they're ruining it. Well, it's an empire now. Exactly, it's becoming a monopoly and it's ridiculous. Oh yeah, like what? What's all the yeah. shit that they own? They own Star Wars and Marvel. And... They own Star Wars, they own Marvel, and because they own Marvel, they own a lot of other shit, too. Mm. Um, National Geographic. Yeah. They got that. I mean, that works with them. National Geographic was fine. Oh, yeah. But, like, I don't know, it just, it, they're, they're starting to buy into, like, more heavier things, like darker things. Mm. Like, like shit that should be an R rating no matter what. Like, well, even like the next Venom movie, Carnage. Oh, yeah. Uh, that might not be an R rating. It might it's not It's got to be an R rating. Yeah. Well, the first Venom movie, PG-13. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. But this is Carnage. All he does is murder. That's his whole thing. 
Oh, really? Yeah. And I'm guessing they're going to turn it into like some like cutesy bullshit where it's Venom meeting up with his bro with his brother again. Uh, were you talking about Let There Be Carnage? Yeah. We were talking about how much Disney sucks. Oh. Well, oh, yeah, I, 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 it's still, I mean, Venom's still technically a Sony property, so they, they will have some pull for that. Yeah, but, but you, you know, while we're on the topic of movies, dudes, you know what I'm excited for a mm-hmm. little bit? Hmm. The new Spider-Man Dude, movie. Dude, Far From Home, or uh, No Way Home looks fucking yeah. amazing. And it, I, I hear Willem Dafoe. Yeah. Willem Dafoe, Alfred Merlina, and um, we're getting Jamie Foxx's Electro again. We might be getting uh, the lizard in this, too. Now, my question is, you guys have seen, like, the new ones, right? Like the Tom Holland Spider Man yeah, movies. I've seen most of them, yeah. There's I think one I didn't see. I don't remember which one it is though. I have and I have questions for both of you. Okay. Okay, first of all, before spoilers because I haven't seen it either. Oh. Uh what the fuck? Mysterion's back? Oh, Mysterio? Yeah, in uh wait, uh he, he's not back in the new trailer for the for No My Home. Well, what he did, what he caused. Oh yeah, well, pretty much. Yeah, it's a direct effect of what happened with. Uh, have you seen, you seen Far From Home, right? Mm-mm. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. Uh, 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 uh. Some some serious spoilers there. Yeah, uh, they, they, I pretty much have to spoil the entirety of Far From Home if you want to know what's going on. That's right now. totally fine with me. Okay, yeah, Mysterio outed Peter Parker. Yeah, that's what I saw in the trailer. Like straight up. Uh, okay, so he was kind of a good guy for the first half, but as it turns out, he was orchestrating everything, making these villains for Peter to fight so he could slowly gain his trust and kind of take over and become this next big supervillain. Essentially, what he did is broadcast Peter Parker's identity as Spider-Man to the world, and now Peter Parker's pretty much on the run trying to and going to Doctor Strange and uh, pretty much saying, hey, can you make the world forget I'm Peter Parker? And in doing so... I mean, because with um with Loki's TV show, Loki is pretty much Loki created the multiverse. Like that's what's going on right now. The multiverse exists in MCU canon now. Hmm. And uh, with that going on, uh, essentially, yeah, uh, Doctor Strange is going to be like uh, the, the reason why everything's coming together is Sony has officially renamed the Spider Verse the Marvel Cinematic Spider Verse. Like all of Sony Spider Man is canon now. Oh, really? Yeah, because, like, this green, this green Goblin and this Doc Ock, they are the Doc Ocks from the Sam Raimi films. This yeah. Electro is the one from The Amazing Spider-Man. Like, this isn't just them reprising the role. This is them. Is Tobey Maguire going to be back? It's allegedly, I don't think they have the balls to do that. Uh, one, because... I want to see the real-life Spider-Man meme. <laughs> I, th- I I don't see Tobey Maguire ever re-entering. The, I, I think you'd love to do it, but I don't think they would pull something like that. Just for the sake that... Well, uh, one, they're going to be facing sti- some stiff competition if they attempt to, because Into the Spider-Verse is an untouchable crossover like that. Like, they be if they bring in multiple Spider-Mans, they're going to have to compete with Into the Spider-Verse. And what's that? Well, they're already planning on bringing in multiple Spider-Men. It's just more, if they bring in Tobey Maguire and uh, Andrew Garfield with that, I just don't see it going I mean, well. that's kind of the plan. Oh. I have, I, At least, uh, from what I understand, that's kind of what they're planning. I don't know if it's happening, but that's what the idea was to begin with. To have all at least all three of them meet at one point in time or another. Man. It probably wouldn't be the whole thing. It's probably going to mainly be uh, what's-his-tits, but... Well, they better do it quick because Tobey Maguire is getting old. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously, though. I mean, that's, that's what I was thinking. It's probably going to be like him being old old man spider-man even though he's not like you know 60 or anything like that but oh no he's probably gonna age him up a little bit and he's gonna be i i think it'd be kind of cool if he were blind spider-man blind spider shit that'd be cool from like the original old man logan man i i i don't even know what toby Maguire looks like nowadays because hollywood doesn't fucking cast him anymore yeah but, uh, I'm, I'm excited for No Way Home, and I'm actually, uh, for, from the trailers that I've seen, Let There Be Carnage, it, it's going to be good. Yeah. I, 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 I have high hopes. I enjoyed Venom originally. It's it, it's a little dopey, but I, I'm excited for it. I'm, I'm just, I'm a huge Venom fan, and if they screw up Carnage, 
and make him baby carnage. No, they're no. He's he's, he's a full on psychopath. Woody Harrelson has confirmed that they are doing carnage accurate to the comics okay. as a fucking psycho. Good. Like literally, he gets carnage by biting Eddie Brock and pretty much the venom, the carnage symbiote entering his bloodstream. Like if they're going with the actual carnage, pretty much infused with Cap- Cletus Cassidy's blood instead of his skin, mm-hmm. like the actual comics. It's it's looking like it's going to be good. The only concern, like it, I just really hope it's R. Just well, actually, it's it's a mixed bag because I actually uh, I did rewatch Logan recently, and one Logan is the best Marvel movie. <laughs> oh yeah, because it's probably the only movie outside of the main Marvel canon that could exist if it didn't have Wolverine starring it. And perhaps, like, the best send-off for any oh, actor, dude. too. Seriously. No kidding. That's been... Because I read somewhere that Wolverine... Hugh Jackman playing Wolverine is the longest that anybody's gone playing one character mm-hmm. yep. in film series. The only person that actually has come close is Robert Downey Jr., but he stepped down as Iron Man, so... Uh, his last role... I mean, he's dead. <laughs> his last role as uh, Iron Man is going to be was that cameo in Black Widow, from what I've heard. I, <laughs> uh, um, Mr. I, Starch... I know, I know Disney is kind of an easy target to hate lately, but there's so many projects I'm excited for that they're working on. Oh, yeah, that's, that's you know, even though I'm getting pissed, I'm more just pissed that they're buying everything. Yeah. I'm not mad at them for, like, making movies and making shit. That's fine. I like a lot of the movies they're putting out, especially, like, comic book shit, because they lately they've been doing it pretty decently. Watch. Especially it's... since DC's been fucking dropping the ball no kidding uh, well, it's gonna be Disney news now <laughs> they, I think they own like CNN or some shit I think they own a little bit of Fox uh, yeah one of them oh they own Fox in general oh. yeah it's Fox yeah it is Fox yeah they just own well I don't I don't know if they own the entire conglomerate of Fox but they own 20th Century Fox at the very least yeah. oh that makes sense but uh I'm excited I'm just... for Obi-Wan yeah that'd be interesting I am so excited for um the uh uh, trigger animation Star Wars mo- uh, Star Wars anime it looks so fucking cool hell yeah <laughs> umbrella lightsaber man <laughs> yeah. I'm just I'm also mad that they're probably going to be buying war rights to Warhammer here soon too but that's that that's not me being mad at Disney for buying that shit out I'm get I'm just mad at Games Workshop for being fucking retarded <laughs> I mean, Disney's doing something that you should be excited for, Tyler. They're doing Marvel Zombies in What If. Are they really? Yup. Well, that's pretty I mean, they've been doing a lot of cool stories with What If. The first one was uh, Captain Carter. The second one was... uh, Oh, God, what was it? I don't remember off the top of my head, but... um, Oh, yeah, it was um, uh, Black Panther as Star-Lord. Huh. And, uh... Hello, roommate. (laughs) And um, the third one was... uh, um, pretty much, uh, spoilers for the third episode of What If, um, on Disney Plus. Uh, it was, um, Loki can take, uh, taking over the world in one day when all the Avengers dying because Hank Pym went psychotic and tried to kill all the Avengers huh. and did. Everyone uh, but Cap died because, um, uh, Cap was still frozen. I, as much as I hate the idea, I might have to get Disney Plus. You gotta get Disney Plus. At least, I, I, I'll at least stay with one of my unyielding hatred. I will not get Netflix until, at least until fucking uh, <sighs> Cowboy Bebop live action comes out. Um, <laughs> but I will. I, I I might have to get Disney Plus. I'll yield on that hatred for a while. <laughs> Ooh, I will still defend Netflix as well. I think their originals are some of the best out there. Oh yeah. Got fucking Bojack Horseman. Got Castlevania. I'm just. I, I I've already said my piece about Netflix. I have a I have a reason to hate them, and it's mainly because they keep their shit so ex- so exclusive that they refuse to make any sort of physical copies for their shit. Yeah. Bojack Horseman needs a physical release because one day it'll be kicked off Netflix and it will never be seen again. This is true. I mean, honestly, you can hate every single streaming service for that right now. Even Amazon. There's no plan to bring the boys to physical. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, Amazon, I know they'll, they won't they will take it off. You can buy you can buy the digital on Amazon, can't you? Yeah. 
not for um, Invincible or The Boys. They don't. You can't buy the seasons. It's an Amazon Prime exclusive show. Okay, that's extra stupid. Well, it should be. You should be able to buy. Well, I mean, I guess if once the show is done, I can see yeah. them buying it because you get more. You get more money off the streaming rights. And Hulu does it too. Their originals are. Just, their originals don't have any physical forms either. I like know, it. but Netflix is the oldest one, and they started as a physical company. That's why I'm mad. <laughs> They started as a physical <laughs> rental company. That's why I'm mad. You're just missing out on a lot of good shows, and I want you to watch them, damn it. <laughs> I mean, there's well, there's also not a whole lot I really want to watch on Netflix. Castlevania is so good, man. I've already watched half of Cas- like most of Castlevania with you. Yeah, but you need to watch it more. <laughs> I'm not interested in watching The Witcher. Why? It's great. Uh, yeah. 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 I mean, Henry Cavill's just great as Geralt. So I mean, the, yeah, Henry Cavill's hot. There's, yeah. there's, 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 there's a lot of dick in there too. Like it's uh, great. Uh, this, see, I'm not, I'm not interested in like watching somebody with their flaccid wiener on Netflix. I see. I guess we, I guess we watch. That's why I go on HBO. <laughs> That's why I go on HBO and watch the goddamn Game of Thrones. <laughs> <laughs> so we got a res- <laughs> we, we actually got a response from Gene Simmons about an hour ago about the Paul Stanley thing. Oh, I thought you were talking about uh, directly responding to us for a minute there, and I'm like, wait, what? Holy oh shit. no! <laughs> well, I did call him out and say that I would fight him. <laughs> I mean, I, yeah, Gene Simmons says the metal joystick sucks, which I say I agree to. <laughs> <laughs> All I know is we're seeing Gene Simmons versus. Tyler in the Octagon. Oh shit! <laughs> versus the Red Ranger. <laughs> Come on, you octogenarian Ranger. <laughs> the octogenarian. Meet me in the Octagon. It's the octogenarian showdown in the Octagon Fuck. with Octomom. Oh god, no. And Alfred Molina. <laughs> Alfred Molina is officiating, and Octomom is the round bitch. Yeah. Continue, Alex. Uh, yeah, instead of, uh, I'm surprised Gene Simmons actually being nice and saying that Paul Stanley's gonna get better and that he's doing just fine and then that because he got the vaccinated, he's gonna be just fine. He got the Delta variant, though. Oh, I'm surprised okay. that Gene Simmons didn't call him a cunt for making him cancel a kiss show and not making millions of dollars in one night again seriously well i mean i guess it would it you would... cost me money because you couldn't keep it in your pants pal he got oh no he got, he got sexually transmitted covid <laughs> yeah <laughs> that that's the delta variant man oh it's covid of I, the penis i can't wait for the ligma variant <laughs> the ligma. i made that joke the other day <laughs> <laughs> Because we got the D, now we need the Ligma. <laughs> Not sponsored by the CDC. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but sponsored by the FDA. <laughs> and the ATF. For and the some a- fucking and the reason. AT&T. Phone home. And the ADL. And the TLC. And the PTSD. And the Food Network Channel. <laughs> and Michael Bay. <laughs> God fucking damn it, boy. Let's give it a boom, bop, bop. Who's excited for the next Transformers movie? No. Not me. <laughs> because it, there's, there's going to be another one. Oh, great. No. I mean, it's not Michael Bay directing, so there's They chance. need to quit making them. I, mean, I love Transformers. They need to quit fucking raping Transformers. Yeah, I, Bumblebee was a flip. What, you didn't like the Mark Wahlberg Transformers movies? They ended after the first movie. There was a, there was a one-off with, with Shia LaBeouf, I remember now. They never made a single one after that. Mark Wahlberg was never in Transformers. You don't in say. fact, he was too what? You you don't say. Uh, I do uh, say. Last last time I checked, I thought he was in. Mark Wahlberg is too good to be in Transformers. He was made it? Ted three and four. Yeah, that that's that's what happened. <laughs> that, we're, that, that, that's the timeline. We're 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 deliberately changing this timeline. We're Mandelaing away. You see, I'm so excited for the second Transformers movie. <laughs> oh man, I can't wait for Ted seven. <laughs> The fuck. Tedning. <laughs> Frankly, fuck every single Transformers movie. Even the first one is pretty fucking rough. But just, god damn it, fuck Age of Extinction and fuck The Last Night. And fuck them for fucking up Unicron. You got any more fucks to put in there? Fuck. Well, you know what's good to fuck? Hmm. The new Rush movie that's coming out. Oh? Yeah, it's gonna be like their uh, 40 year 
thing, like their 40 year tour footage in 2021. Awesome. And it's going to be in the theaters, apparently. Ooh. So we should check if this theater in town has it. Fuck yeah. Because you know how long it's been since I've been to a theater, boys? Actually, they probably show it in Fargo. We could go to Fargo. Yeah. We could go to one of those really nice theaters with the. The, the s- dream loungers. Oh, yeah, that I always fall asleep in. <laughs> Actually, my, they, uh, oh, my old theater had dream loungers, and I just kind of, I used to hang out in them chairs. <laughs> you know, you'd go in and watch Avatar on the big screen, go in the dream lounger. Oh, I was walking, watching Joker, you idiot. <laughs> you incel. I am not an incel. <laughs> you know, Tyler? How dare you? Yes. What do you get when you cross a mentally unstable man in a society that treats him like trash? SpongeBob! <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what you get, Tyler. You get what you fucking deserve. Oh, you, no! I mean, you get Joaquin Phoenix just kind of in general. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah. Dude, he is literally an awesome person, but man, is he creepy. <laughs> I, I still get goosebumps just from that scene in the Joker movie. There's yeah. so many great, just straight up perfect moments in that movie. Joker oh, yeah. is a masterpiece. Joker I can't is wait a... for Joker 2. Electric so excited. Blue. It's going to be good. Uh, hopefully. Hopefully it's going to be good. I mean, if Walking Phoenix has any say in it, it's going to be fucking amazing. Yeah. Man, we're going to get a whole bunch of good stuff. We're going to get good video games, good movies, good fucking albums. Yeah, we got a, we got a lot of video games on the horizon. We got the blatant copyright Hollow Knight clone, Crow Sworn. Yeah. <laughs> Psychonauts 2 just came out oh, yeah. on the Game Pass. We're getting Tales of Arise, which I'm pumped for. Quake just got an update. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting Cock of Dookie Vanguard. We're getting Horizon Forbidden West, which, I mean, for all those uh, Guerrilla Games fans, sorry, we're never getting a Killzone 4. <laughs> I mean, technically Killzone 5, I keep forgetting that I own Killzone Shadowfall. It's that much of an un- it's that much of a unimpressive game. I mean, they were... Br- we're getting, getting we're getting Halo Infinite, yeah. We're getting Halo 4 because they... We're getting Halo 4. <laughs> they, they never released a game after 3, right, guys? Yeah, yeah. Wait, 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 okay, wait. stop what you're doing, Tony. Okay. Guardians, ODST, and Halo 4 are pretty decent. And I'm not going to fucking hear it from you. <laughs> we can talk about Transformers with this because those movies actually suck. <laughs> Halo after Halo 3 is just fine. <laughs> Except for Halo Wars. We don't talk about Halo yeah, Wars. we do talk about Halo Wars. We talk about Halo Wars 1 and 2, guys. No, we don't. We talk about Halo Wars 2, because it's done by the Total War guys, and it's fucking awesome. And so, actually, the villain of Halo Wars 2 is apparently the villain of Halo Infinite. And, oh, come on, Brendan. Halo 5 was fucking awful, man. No, it wasn't. I Halo. like Guardians. You're the only one. <laughs> <laughs> yes, our, our roommate here is probably like the Halo fan. That's it's all he fucking talks about. <laughs> Just those three. God damn. I like those. Those three are classics, though. I mean, frankly, I I I, I don't have a I don't have an actual stake in the matter because I barely played Halo. I I never owned an Xbox. I owned an Xbox, Xbox for about a week. Let's <laughs> say you. You were a PlayStation gamer throughout that whole oh, yeah. time. And I will completely give credit. Halo was always better than Killzone. <laughs> Big facts. They, they never stood a chance. There, there is no Halo killer. Halo shooting itself. <laughs> the Halo killer. The Halo killer was 343 Studios. <laughs> and like I said before the podcast, I'm, I'm a little upset about Vanguard. They're, uh, they're just another World War II setting again. I'm really happy that they're going to be doing with all the uh, all the locations that you can go to now. I'm excited because we're getting, like, um, Halo, or not fucking, Halo cover World War II, right? Yeah. <laughs> fucking vent. Did I say Halo? No, I said Halo. Oh, okay. I was no, about to say. Uh, Battlefield covered, like, the, actually, no, Battlefield didn't cover, um, they covered the African side of the war in um, World War One, but not yeah. World War Two. Um, it's gonna be cool to see like the actual other fronts. I mean, Medal of Honor has done that, but it, I mean, Call of Duty is finally tackling it, and they do have a lot more gravitas with their games. Although they're rip, I didn't even think about it until I was re- what like the title came on. They're fucking stealing the title of one of the Medal of Honor games. There's already a van a game with the subtitle Vanguard based in World War Two. Fucking Medal of Honor Vanguard, and it's the best Medal of Honor. 
I, I just want Call of Duty to do something else other than World War Two. I know that they just did Cold War and that they're doing Modern Warfare and shit, but I can I want something different. Call of Duty Civil War. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that pass these days, man. <laughs> Call of Duty Battle of Hastings. <laughs> Call of Duty. <laughs> Call of Duty Grenada. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, oh. man. God. God. But I don't know. They've made like fucking sixty nine World War Two inspired yeah. games for Call of Duty. Can we do something different? I will be. Cold honest. War was great. I will be honest though. I don't want them to continually make up wars though. I am half. I'm fine with World War Two because I'm. I'm so sick of them <laughs> making up conflicts for the next Call of Duty. With like they were doing forever with Black Ops and Advanced Warfighter and though and that which shall not be named. Call of Duty War on Drugs. Call of Duty. Exactly. <laughs> Goddamn right. You're a narcotics officer taking drugs from kids at the fucking high school. Call of Duty SVU. There we go. I oh, solved oh, it. No. I solved it. Oh, if I can play Olivia Benson, hell yeah. Exactly. Except could... instead of solving crimes, you're just lighting up Mike Tyson. <laughs> <laughs> He got raped by an ass. <laughs> Mike Tyson got raped by an ass. <laughs> oh, Jesus. I, you know what? I, I'm gonna make, a, I'm gonna make a prediction. The next Call of Duty after this Vanguard is gonna be space. Probably. Didn't they already do space? No. No? I don't think so. Maybe. I mean... Like, didn't they go into space in, like, like what, future Advanced war Warfare? Warfare advanced yeah. Warfare or Call of Duty Black Ops 3 or 4? Actually, did, I, I, what didn't Black Ops 4 not even have a campaign? I don't think it did. I know it was trash. Yeah. I heard that from, like, every Call of Duty fan that Black Ops 4 is trash. Well, it's because they were trying to jump on board of the Battle Royale... Uh, bandwagon that kind of crashed a year after it happened. Yeah. The only one that came out of it is Fortnite and Valorant. Which you I got? think Warzone's still pretty popular, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Would you like to hear the uh, update that they got for their zombies now since it's season five? Oh. They got they added a new perk to what their is it? thing. It's like uh, death perception. Oh. And you can see zombies through walls and shit. All right. It's pretty cool. I mean, well, actually, uh, speaking of new games. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> Call of Duty glasses ops. It's fuck 2020 vision. No, all my, it is, is... <laughs> my eyes are so good I can see right through concrete. <laughs> um, but we're also getting fucking Elden Ring. We're getting the Saints Row reboot. Yeah, we are. Grand Theft Auto Six in five years. If we're if Grand Theft Auto Six is going the direction that we were just talking about before the show. I'm fucking pumped because it uh, allegedly very random rumors, but at the same time, if it's a return to the Vice City style, I'm gonna be so fucking happy. Allegedly, I, mean, I did hear a while ago, and I actually just kind of thought about this, re like well after our conversation about it, they were kind of talking about doing uh, another thing in Vice City again. So it might just be like, you know, how Five is a fleshed out version of fucking San Andreas. Mm -hmm. Well, this might be a fleshed out version of my city. <laughs> Instead of just the county, it's just all of Florida. <laughs> all of Florida. You all know? of Florida. I want Grand Theft Auto Dallas, Texas. <laughs> I want where, ev <laughs> where everybody's carrying a gun at all times. I'm a, I want Grand Theft Auto Montana. Oh, wait, that's just Far Cry 5. <laughs> <laughs> or Red, Red, Red Dead Redemption 2. Well, I mean, yeah. <laughs> We need a Grand Theft Auto, Louisiana. Fuck. <laughs> Actually, shit, that's just Mafia 3. <laughs> <Boy. laughs> My roommate just gave me a fucking stink guy for that one. <laughs> you know, I'm surprised that they haven't, like, well, I guess they haven't released very many Grand Theft Auto games. It, it's honestly kind of surprising because you, it's such a legendary series. It's only had five mainline games, and we I think we all agree. We don't count Chinatown Wars, the Liberty City episodes, and... Um, Ballad Blessed. of Gay Tony. And no, the DLC for four was fucking legit. Ballad of Gay Tony was A awesome. lot of people forget Vice City stories 
and Liberty City stories. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, they're and both. Not, and I'm not talking about like the fucking DLC for, mm-hmm. you know, the. I think Vice. I mean, Liberty City stories was good. That's the. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you play as. Uh, what was his name? Oh, no, Claude's the original. You play as like a fucking. FBI guy kind of thing. I, think. I haven't thought about Liberty City Stories and then in forever. Vice City Stories. I really like that one too because you, I mean, it's just an updated version of Vice City, but you play as uh, a military dude who gets caught in like a drug ring. Mm. The story on those are really good. I've just been playing a lot of San Andreas lately. <laughs> yeah. And of course. You know, your boy uses cheat codes every fucking time. Yeah. I guess uh, I, I did get a little... I, I was a little salty with Liberty City and Vice City. So I just to say that they were PSP ports on PS2. But at the same time, we did get some of the best Battlefront games... Star Wars Battlefront games on PSP. So, yeah. mm-hmm. Double-Edged Sword. Mm-hmm. Rogue Squadron was fucking great. I'd say. Hell yeah. I mean, they did eventually come to the PlayStation mm-hmm. 2, PlayStation 3. I mean, it was cool to be in Liberty City before, you know, 4 happened and 4... I think 4 is just kind of a drop-off point, honestly. Yeah, 4 is definitely the worst one. Because like, it was, like, it's just so bland. Like, there's no color to it. There's fucking nothing. I will say, though, that the gunplay is, like, was a... The upgrade was desperately needed because I was not a fan of the gunplay in San Andreas or Vice City. It's a fun game, but man, it they, they do still... Oh, at least I remember them last time I played in Vice City. Actually, last time you were playing Vice City, you were complaining the controls were ass. Yeah, it's definitely... <laughs> yeah, it's definitely not the best. Going back you what. to Vice City is kind of hard. But hopefully the next one's good. and it, they The rumors say that it's going to be out in October of 2023. So at least we got something to look forward to. Can we, uh, can we just say, though, that I'm really disappointed the direction they took the Lost and Damned in 5? Just turn them into a bunch of fucking meth head bikers and a shitty yeah. gang. Yeah. After how awesome they were in Liberty's in Forge <sighs> DLC. It is pretty sad. I keep forgetting that Liberty City stories and episodes from Liberty City both exist. Like, yeah. It's so fucking weird. And that, like, Liber- Liberty City stories was a PSP game. I forget that one exists, honestly. <laughs> I remember Vice City stories just because, uh,. My friend Brady had it, but uh, I barely remember Liberty City stories. Yeah, I think they're both. I think, well, I like the story of Vice City better, but Vice City stories is just almost as good. I mean, we have the best Grand Theft Auto game. Scarface, the world is yours. <laughs> <laughs> Which but. we're going to have to play for the channel one of these days, but I, I'm, I'm guessing it's going to be kind of rough with the controls it's gonna be rough but at least i have at least i have a pretty good ps2 controller for it no <laughs> doubt well buds i think we're at we're almost at that two hour mark how, yeah. we, how we feel that's all that i had all today right, um, i i mean for news i got it just i'm excited for super monkey ball <laughs> yeah <laughs> especially excited. with the yakuza character and it? persona and persona i'm fucking pumped well, nobody plays fucking persona Bitch, please. <laughs> Everybody plays Persona. No Not one plays if you're Super- a Smash Brothers player. It's fight words. Them, 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 them oh, is shit. fight words. <laughs> Fuck it. You, uh, people play Bayonetta too, and she's in Smash. Actually, people want to play Bayonetta, but fucking Hideki Kamiya won't stop blocking people on Twitter for no goddamn reason. <laughs> Actually, I have. Um, okay, uh. One random little thing. We need to get uh, fucking localized over here, but it'd be a pain in the ass. There is a kaiju game that combines Ultraman, Neon Genesis Evangelon, Gamera, and Godzilla into one game. Jesus. I know which one you're talking about, and there's like a fan translation, but... One is for PS3, so it's almost impossible to unregion lock your fucking PS3. It's probably never going to be coming over. If it does, it'll come over on PC. Yeah, well, because the biggest issue would be for bringing it over stateside. One, they're not going to localize. Actually, no, it's a PS4 game, but either way, localizing it. One, it'd be a pain in the ass trying to localize. Because in the U.S., the rights for all those for airing are owned by completely different companies. And two, I mean, we'd have to have any American fan care about Ultraman. (laughs) I care about Ultraman because I fucking love Ultraman, but... I love old school Ultraman, but that's about it. I mean, the... <laughs> the Netflix series is really good. 
Uh-huh. <laughs> I didn't even mean to shoehorn that in, but. Uh huh. <laughs> Okay, I will side with you on one thing that Netflix has destroyed. The Godzilla trilogy was fucking awful. Yeah, it was. Like, I, I can, like, I understand you kind of turning off of Netflix after watching those because the first movie had so much potential. That and then was they such a bed. bastardization. I was so pissed. They shit the bed so hard on that. Uh, we're going to be making it as, uh, there's, like, zombie aliens and, fire. Uh, Godzilla's not actually Godzilla. He's a he's a Zilla god. And, uh, <laughs> uh, I mean, the giant Godzilla at the end of uh, the first movie was pretty legit, though. I mean, they looked cool. Yeah. I mean, the, I hated the story. All I of liked, them sucked. The first movie was okay, but man, bat, what was it like? They had the stupidest <sighs> names too. Yeah. Like the second one, like Battle on the Living City or something like that, and then third one i don't i didn't even finish the third movie i didn't even finish it yeah. and it had Go- Ghidorah, my favorite godzilla character i didn't even fucking care Damn. So we need to watch Call- godzilla versus calm here too since you own that yeah. <laughs> all right <laughs> I, think, I, I think we finally hit over the two hour mark <laughs> right. and we're, we, we, we're ranted enough uh, thanks. enough waffling about nothing thanks for listening everybody hope it's you, good to be back hope you enjoyed and we'll we're gonna be we're gonna be we're back in action and we're back we're, we're, we're back in... We're back. We're just back. We're just back. We're just back. Back in the Minnesota groove. Back in back in this... Back in the saddle again. Burt Bacharach. We're back! Burt Bacharach. But uh, catch y'all later. Goodbye. Bye, everybody. And remember to catch our next... Our next podcast of... Cause of a fact. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Wear a condom. <laughs>